<laughs> All right. Welcome, Hellabass Live. Tonight, back on our normal nights, Wednesday night, we have the... ACBO started as my college project. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing the ad. That's just me right. not muting my mic, man. Nice. There we go. Let, let me skip the ad. Sorry about that, dude. Yeah, with the ad playing Epic America official. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up from the Bass Lab, man. I don't know yeah. what it was playing, but it, it was playing you know, something. I mean, Eric doesn't get a chance to stream much, so he's new to this. So you I am. Be, I am. Just be, bear with us. Be patient. It be out. patient with me, everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of blew it, man. I ran the chat for uh, Ike Live uh, last Saturday, and I failed to give credit to the people asking the questions. <laughs> so somebody was like, dude, you're supposed to say their name. And I'm like, I'm really new at this. I'm a little jittery in studio. So... If I screw up tonight, guys, forgive me. <laughs> I already one down. I got one strike, yeah. one now, right now. Brian, I'll come back. Yeah, who's we're here? Sounding who's good? here? Okay, yeah. How's my volume for you? Good. Sounds good to me. Hello? Everybody else says sounds right. good. Awesome, uh, Michael. We are gonna keep. We're gonna focus on fishing tonight. Yes. No, uh, none of that crazy stuff. None of that tin hat stuff. We're gonna focus on fishing. Um, that's why that, I said. That's let's my do promise it. to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> exactly thank you thank you good 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 we're getting thumbs up yeah uh we'll see the night is young we'll see but we don't know yeah. where the night will take us that's very true that's very true man it's been a minute i bet you it's probably been two years at least a year <laughs> since you were on last time when we had the surprise bait man man i think you're right because um it has been yeah i mean it was like three years with alex rudd he was like, or maybe two. He was like, no way, dude. I'm like, yep. Yeah. It gets, it, time flies, man. Time is flying. Yeah. yeah. Let's not wait two years again, though. That's for sure. No, it's fine. Well, it's like, you know, kind of like we talked about, you you know, you you uh, stream almost every week with Travis. That's so right. It's like, you know, you, know, you, you got you know, other things you got to do from time to time. And <clears> that's so. true. That's true. But wintertime, man, that's the time to get me. Like when yeah, derby sure. season starts, it's just, it, it would be hard to do two in a week. You know, I'm barely hanging on with one in a week. And, you, you know, that's why we switched to Mondays because I was trying to do it on Thursdays. And I'm like, dude, I'm traveling Thursdays. So There's just, I'm not doing yeah, it. I'm getting ready for a tournament. Derby, you're, you're like, oh, you're in yeah. Mode, you're like, <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, I rarely get to practice on Thursday, but sometimes I'm driving Thursday. And if mm -hmm. I'm not driving Thursday, I'm driving Friday for no practice for a derby on Saturday and waking up absolutely cold after a long boat run with Scooter and then, you know, trying to cast accurately. After or you're digging around in the bait room, finding the, the secret flat side that you're getting ready that's for the right. weekend. Or, that's right. That's right. Or that's maybe right. you're and doing some bait hacks, getting ready for the tournament. You know, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so so how are we going to do this, man? Just like like one, 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 just go. Like, let's say we've got a, a, a herring spawn tournament and I'm looking at my spinner bait collection. I go, you know what? I don't have anything with a little chartreuse and blue in it, even though herrings have an olive back. So let's, I'm just going to jump in. So, right, so, just just, roll? so just set up the show. Uh, no, what the premise is, yeah. that if you couldn't tell from the title and the thumbnail, <laughs> this is going to be like an hour to two hours of, I didn't ask Eric yeah. how much time he had, but probably two yeah. hours of straight bass hacks. That's like right. what Eric, who's the ultimate tinkerer, Bait lab, epic Eric Bait Lab. We'll talk about that, but <laughs> yeah, we're just yeah. going to give away our favorite tweaks, hacks, yeah, uh, adaptations, whatever you want to call it. Things we do in the boat with bait and tackle yep. to either be more efficient, to catch more fish, give ourselves more confidence. Sure, we're going to run through those tonight. So, uh, yep. if you like to catch fish, then this stream might be for you. That's right. That's right. This this stuff gets me through the winter. Like, what else am I going to do but walk around in circles, lay on the couch, fall asleep, watch a Netflix movie, wake up at 3.30, eat something sweet, go back to sleep, wake up tired, work. Got to come down to the bass lab and cleanse my mind and soul. And that's how that's how I try to do it. You know, surrounded by nail polish. I'm a Sally Hansen man through and through. You guys know that one. If you know me, I paint a lot of baits with nail polish. But it's not just painting baits with nail polish. There's other things you could do with it. So we'll sure. dive into that at some point, too. So I kind of. You know, I kind of I kind of think of it three ways, adding mm -hmm. color, adding flash, adding sound. Those are some main categories for me. So uh, we could we could dive into uh, different categories, jump around. Who knows what it's going to mm -hmm. be? Probably not really yeah. organized. 
little ADD. No, we, 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 we told, we both agreed that we were going to come up with bait hacks. Neither one, we didn't yep. come up. I just threw the number 50 plus in the title. That's right. Didn't really say, I, I probably got 15 or 20 written down. I figure mm. there will be some like, Oh yeah, you know, it, like oh that, be over that reminds me, Eric. Or since you said right. that, like right that's right. This, so I feel like no I got doubt. enough to get started. That's um, right. I think Eric's, like you said, are gonna be more like color, flow, vibration. Or mine, I think, we might be more like a little more. There'll be some of that, but a little more flavor on efficiency. Yeah, there you go. I like that. And so I think that's where mine might have a little bit different flavor. And I got a really cheap money saver for you crankbait heads out there, so that you could keep in your pocket. I've shown it before. If you missed it, you're gonna love you're gonna love it because it's it will save you money on the back end. And it really works for any bait. I mean, if you really want to go get your lead head, you could use it for a lead head too. Nice. Well, Amy's here, so we can start. You go ahead and rip a one off. Amy, there you go. All right, man. So I'm gonna see if anybody can identify what the heck this is anyway that I use for this for this first bait hack. And um, this allows me to add color to a bait. So here's the, here's the, the big package of them. So you'll notice in there, it is a looped, and I'll show the small one right next to it, but I don't know how well that's going to show up. It has a loop and a threader. What is that, Hella? It's for threading dental floss when you have braces. That's right. So if you, you had to get some dental floss, you stick it between your teeth, you stick your dental floss in there, you pull it through and it gets the floss. Through yeah, I guess you can't it could be braces or you just have a really tight and you can get a little gap or whatever. That's yeah. right. A, a lot of people have dental work like a crown. They can't get the floss through. So this is a dental floss threader. So I've already got one pre-threaded on this spinnerbait. So uh, this is no particular spinnerbait, just one I grabbed out of the Bass Lab. So let's say I wanted to take this very plain shad looking thing and add a little chartreuse blue and maybe mm. a little hot flash. So here, here's what I've done. I've taken the dental floss threader and I've already put it under the band. So you can see the loops right up here, right? You got it. And I've already pre-cut my color for my skirt and I'm going to stick it through the loop halfway. <clears throat> you know, you're probably not going to be able to see this perfectly, but you'll get the idea. And uh, halfway through the loop, and I'm going to find the end of that threader, which is blending with the skirt right now. I got it. And I'm going to pull the skirting material a little, through. A little higher. Hold it up. Oh, a little higher. higher. A little higher. Yep. A little higher. A little higher. Yep, 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 yep. And then just pull it through. And then once you're satisfied, you kind of can just break it and you've got your color. And you could just monkey around with the flavor. But there you go. I didn't do it great, but whatever, guys. Right. I did it fast, so I don't want to spend. There a lot you add a little chartreuse, right? Yeah, little chartreuse and blue to that skirt, and you know you can pull it up, and you know so it lays straight. So I won't take the time to do that, but there you go. I did it really fast. Well, you could add a little flash. Well, that's what I did on you the. You could other add side. a couple red strands if you're into bleeding baits, right? You right. Could add, I mean, like orange, right? You feel like oh, well, it's a little yeah, bluegill, or it, it's uh, limitless, right? Limitless limitless so this is something i picked up at a saltwater store i think these are like i don't know you stick a hook through it you stick the line through it but it's a hank of flash and i got like three of these super mm -hmm. cheap so instead of going to the fly store but that's like mm -hmm. you know just awesome awesome flash and i put some on the other side so that's your yeah, flashy yeah. that's your flashy could be rubber bait. you could be adding rubber to a silicone silicone to a rubber Anything. like Anything. yeah like it could be weird stuff like yep it doesn't even have to be traditional skirt material. Like I know That's one right. time I played around with, uh, I had some like really kind of vinyl red stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what I was doing is I was, you remember the old Hildebrands? They had those little split tail, little fat. Yeah. Uh, right. They would have like those drop, like built in trailers. And yep. I, you could mimic something like that. You could add that to a skirt with something like that. So That's right. So I, so I straightened it out. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now you see the cup there. We got so there you uh, go. Already a genius. The We're one tip in. RN and Stevens eighty six says genius. <laughs> Good. Dental Critical floss gravy says forty nine. We're counting down. <laughs> so you guys, you guys keep us track. Uh, there gravy, you go. You're in right. charge of keeping track. Nice, nice. Yeah, you're right. I believe that is a big mouth spinner. Make sure that I'm not clickbaiting you. That uh, we're actually. <laughs> that's right. So that's your uh... dental floss threader, man. Hook life, white whale. Uh, I, we're not organized enough to do it by season. So, no. Uh, sorry. But good suggestion if you would have told us a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you're slow rolling a spinner bait. So, I mean, you know, let's say your water gets really muddy and you want to take your spinner bait that has a white head 
and you go, you know what? That's not hot enough. Go get yourself some nail polish and fluorescent orange and paint that head. Even with the skirt on, it doesn't have to be clean. Who cares what it looks like, but make the head completely fluorescent orange. Sure. Nail polish. just, Or you could just do it on the bottom, right? If you want to give it a little throat. Already right? there. Like, That's right. You could do a yep. throat, accent colors, little red gills. You can get as crazy as you want with nail polish. But it's quick. It's down. It's dirty. And use a hair dryer to dry it fast. You can fish it the next day. Or if you're in the boat. Set it on a plano box. Let the sun mm -hmm. bake on it a little bit. Yep. Fish for ten minutes. She should be good to go if it's sunny and hot out. <clears throat> Absolutely. And these are really handy for the boat. These are paint markers. So that's a paint marker versus nail polish. So you know you shake it up, and these dry pretty fast actually in the in the sun. So that's another that a, way to. That's just a, like a craft store paint marker. That's not like that's a right. Paint. Got it at Michael's, man. Crafty, crafty. Do you have like you a do you have a membership at Michael's? Do you have like the frequent? <laughs> <laughs> do the soccer moms know you at uh it's, michael's like they're like I'll oh you, eric it's good to see I'll, you i'll tell you a story about going to uh target and this lady was like what are you doing with all that nail polish your wife trusts you to like buy that uh, and and i'm like no nah, i paint i paint baits with it she goes what do you mean baits and i said you know i fish and she, i had to show her my phone she goes i don't believe you and i go well here they are and i showed her my phone with all the paint and crank baits on it so there you nice. go man yeah that's right. AJ's All right. Are we doing like 1v1? One one? I, I should probably do something. So I think that was two, right? Two. We showed the paint mark. Three. The, I don't know. It might be uh, three. I don't know. All right. You guys, you guys decide. Critical Gravy is the official counter. So I'm just going to let him. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You know, take notes. The replay will be up. Although there might be so much juice in this one. I might have to make this replay members only. I don't know. Hey, like, I this got, could be. Hello. Since I showed the paint mark, I want to show you one thing that, that I did. So a, a lot of people um, like a, a micarta lip, right? Computer board, circuit board, mm -hmm. whatever the hell you call it. I can never get it straight. Um, I, I, you know, if you're, if you're, if this gives the bait more crispy action. Uh, then you've got the Lexan, you know, the Lexan lip. And, and by the way, both baits painted by TK Stanley at Tackle Craft. So, you know, when I'm cranking rock and I crank a lot of rock, the Lexan is going to really last a little bit longer. If I want that crispier action, and maybe I'm not worried about grinding the lip down and rock, but I want the I I, I like the bait uh, to the the lip to match the bait. So I've got this nice colored crawfish here with this white lip. It bugs me. So what did I do? I painted the lip orange, and so now it flows. So you know, crawfish swim backwards, right? So this is the hot orange tail going backwards, swimming away from the bass. You know, because crayfish swim backwards. So now I've taken a micarta lip and just dusted it with some of this paint marker. There you go, man. Tip for you. And they make them in red, all different colors. I usually stick with my reds, my oranges and stuff. So it sticks nicely to it. You know, it might chip off, flake off, but who cares? I'll just come back and paint it again. And if you really yeah. want to get crazy, you can put dots on it. It doesn't have to be straight orange. You can take a Sharpie. Then you can Sharpie on top of that. You could draw little claws on it if you really want to get yeah, funky, get like, the, like that lucky craft run. Bluegills, man, whatever. Blue, blue crab. Absolutely. Whatever, right? yeah. You got it, man. You got it. So. There you go, man. Paint marker right. could be used for anything, but in particular, I like it for this sometimes too. So, Eric, do you do you throw a rigs at all with your tournaments with the captain? I have thrown an a rig with uh, the captain in the tournament. Um, it's never been part of our winning formula. But do you like throwing an a rig? I hate throwing an a rig. Why do you hate it? <laughs> um, hmm. Is this the management. Let's the see. It's, it's certainly the... it's it's unruly. It's expensive. I remember the first time I threw an A rig with Scooter, I had it was like a chandelier because there's no right. limit where we were, sure. and I, I hung it in a brush pile, and it was like thirty eight dollars worth of baits on that yeah. thing, and I'm but like, the big that thing sucks. Is, right, there's not a great way. I mean, <clears throat> there are some aftermarket things on how to manage them. To me, yeah, most of them are big and clunky. They take up space. They take time. Yeah. So, a rigs, right? Like, yeah, they catch them, especially in the winter, pre spawn, right? So, see, sure. back to white whale. This is on point for this time of year, right? Um, right. You spread them out, all that stuff. But on the deck, uh, if you're yeah. a team guy like Eric trying to nestle it down with your other Loomises, oh, right? Yeah. That's a nightmare. Yep. So, we've got an O ring, an oversized O ring right there. Yep. So, you can fish with that on there. It doesn't affect a thing when you're ready to put it on your rod. You just pull it down, and that thing is all. That's dynamite. Up. That's dynamite, man. Love it. 
So you a rig fisherman, and then in tackle management, now this fits in your bag, it fits in your plano, it fits whatever. That's brilliant. It's a, it's a five cent thing, and I know there's a bunch of other ones and people with zip ties and all that. But this, like to me, the beauty of this is when this is up, it does not affect the fishability of it. Heck no, that's so. perfect, man. I love it. Somebody said hair clips work too, binder right. clips. Yeah, but yeah. I like that, what I like about this. So it stays with the bait, and I never lose it. All, most of those yeah, other yeah. ones are like you take it off, you put it in your pocket, you set right. it on the deck, it flies out. You know, the zip tie. I guess I don't want a big clunky zip tie on the front of my bait. This to me is mm -hmm. a little more blended. So, yep, very good, man. Very good. Love it. Love it. You want to do another one since I took like two, or you want? Uh, what do you want to do? Sure, I got. Let's okay, see here I got. Uh, all right, so we got. Uh, let me find the other part of this. Right on. So Eric Eric spent all week and all day getting all his ready, and he's very prepared. <laughs> uh, I can fill in if you need. Let, let me know. Sure, Not go a ahead problem. and do one while I'm digging here. I thought I had a, a, a okay that I want to show off here. Go ahead. No worries, man. This is a very timely one for this time of year, and it once again involves a crankbait. So who, who can identify, Helen, you need to look at this while you're looking. That's the, how could you do that, right? What is that? What am I holding? I think Amy might know, but what is that? Is that rigid it's, or is it soft? It's, it's spongy. It's, it's soft. like an EVA foam or something. It's soft. Yep, it's soft. It's soft. This is foam. Yeah, Rusty, you got it. It's, a, it's actually a cuticle sponge. It's a cuticle sponge. This is what women use to like nasty cuticles, you know, it smooths them out. So okay. uh, it's a very light sandpaper, if you will. So I like to, in the spring, knock my shine down off my crankbait. See how shiny that crankbait is? That's a brand new crankbait. I'm going to take this and try to fade it out a little bit by sanding it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start on this side. And what happens when I'm doing this, you'll watch. So, so you can see how it's shiny there and it's starting to get dull on top. So I'm just going to knock that shine down, right? Knock it down, knock it down. And you could do it with other things. So you could do it with sandpaper if you wanted to. But I just like this because if I have the hooks on the bait and I happen to like flick right into a hook, the sponge saves my finger. So, and something happens to the colors, especially like an orange, man. It gets this glow to it. So um, if I had two of the same bait, I would have shown you like one knock down and the other not. But uh Anyway, I think you'll see. Could you use a magic difference. eraser, Michael Payne asks. I would imagine that would maybe. You do might it. be able to, but I um, guess it depends really... how the crankbait and how hard the clear coat. On That's the... right. So this this took it off. I could keep going if you you know, but it, it just shows you that it knocked the shine down enough, <laughs> gives the bait a faded color. And why do we do that? Because in cold water, bait fish have a fade to them, right? So just knocks the shine down. There here's you go. A, a I like to fade it out. As a as a co angler. This, this might be helpful. Anthony Geis yeah. says in a jam, you can mitigate some swamp ass with that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. I love sanding on this. With, when when the belly is orange, I especially like it, man. Something happens to that orange when you when you, when you you knock the, the shine down. It just has this more like glow to it, soft glow. So it's, it's really a faded look. And again, bait fish get white. It's just like a bass. In warm water, mm -hmm. he's super green. And in cold water, he gets super white. So same thing happens to the bait. Maybe not an orange crawfish, but bad example. But anyway, I do it with all my baits in the spring. So there you go. Yeah, so there could be multiple reasons, right? Like so many of the baits are super glossy. So if you want to be a little mm -hmm. different. Uh, sure. You know, definitely things like shad and bluegills, when they're not doing super healthy, they're not as shiny, yeah. right? They get a little more beat yeah, up, a little right. more matted. They, you know, some other things, but I mean, sh shad tend to be kind of shiny, but other. Yeah things are you know not as shiny so that, that's some of the reasons to knock it down and especially in clean yeah. water uh, yep deep bo says tk is cringing right now <laughs> <laughs> i know that was a brand new tk paint that i uh, literally just knocked all the clear coat off of but look if you get all crazy you just take some sally hansen hard as nails and put your clear back on it and you're fine man i mean it's basically what 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 they use on top of crankbait. So just let it dry. You got to let it gas off, you know, because it comes on a little thick. You know what I mean? So hard as nails is my answer to everything. This is the clear coat that I use. It's Sally Hansen hard as nails. So I'm anyway, pretty sure TK go, uses man. the same clear coat. I think. Oh so. sure, yeah. He just thins it down and shoots it to a yeah, gun. Yeah. So yeah, you got it. Uh, Amy That's says right. TK will be roasting. Tune in for lunch with TK tomorrow. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, absolutely. Welcome. He, you know he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't fool around with this Mickey Mouse stuff, man. He could care less. DK keeps it simple. This is all about making it complex. Yeah. All right. So here's my next one. Get yourself a uh, two dollar Walmart, Walgreens, Amazon hole punch. Get your mm-hmm. favorite butter lid. Lando Lakes. I Snap knew out a bunch of those and I use you put them. them in a little baggie. And you, I guess the other thing I do is I punch. I guess I don't have it here, but I'll take a nail and I'll right. punch little center holes in all those. And right. those are the perfect buzz bait, spinner bait, trailer Absolutely. hook keepers. Um, yep. Or you can use it for centering things or positioning things on baits, right? They sell bait sure. tabs like this. You they can sure do for do a yourself. dollar, and you're already gonna buy butter, so like you can make your own, right. and then you can you know you want blue ones, you want green ones, you want red ones, yep. right? Like if you want to yep. use that as a color accentuator, that's a sure. pretty quick one. So then this is just you know, I I got a couple bags of these. One will be in my like to go bag, like my co angler yeah. bag, and then another yeah. one will sit like one in, inside my compartments and like one of my cup holders in the Camus, like where I keep all my stuff, and then I have this and yeah. I have another bag that we'll talk about, but this is my trailer hook keepers. Nice, nice. I had a similar thing. Um, uh, this is a little, I just like the color. It's a fluorescent orange. They're called Poochie Beads. I cut them in half and uh, it really, it, it's, a, it's a nice little color accent as well. They sell them in chartreuse orange and other colors. So I just like that little target. If I have that on the hook shank, I feel good about it. Just like the red, but this is fluorescent uh-huh. orange. Hard to find fluorescent orange plastic lids. So yeah. if you're really, you know, crazy about fluorescent orange, that that poochie bead is good. And you can cut them in half because they're soft, soft, mm-hmm. and they won't let the hook slip through. You want the, um, it's 48 pieces, and they're 8 millimeter beads. So you can get 96 pieces for pretty cheap, too. Way cheaper than the tabs that they sell, so. Nice. Yeah, Anthony and says a little shot of color. the tabs for yeah. locking a wacky rig on, or, yeah, you can definitely use yeah for yeah. positioning plastics, things like that, for sure. Yep, absolutely. Sure can. No question about it, man. Yeah, yeah. or, right, Bo, he likes clear. So you just, like a hummus lid would be clear. It would. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Colors of the rainbow. We ready for the next tip? What are we doing? Whoa, oh, yeah. Craig says we've already done 10. There's there's a, buzz, there's a buzz bait that had it on. And and I want to do one more thing with the, with the sponge um on a buzz bait blade and then we'll get into some modifications on buzz blades and, and do, do, you, do you think people will be mad if we do more than 50 i don't know anyway somebody said critical gravy says slow down show will be over soon so that 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 blade's got a lot of shine so let's say i want to knock the shine down same thing man use the sponge knock the shine down on your blade got it so anyway mm-hmm. you could you could it just gets a little duller look you know a little more subtle than everybody else and uh, when you're putting your buzz bait together, you see the hole in the end of that. If I'm putting a buzz bait yep. together, I'll I'll take one that I get from the store and I'll take it apart, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll disassemble the buzz blade. What I want you to do is make put a pair of scissors in there. You got to have some fly tying scissors, <laughs> and I just make the hole bigger. So instead of putting it in front of a fan or running it underwater or putting it on your car antenna, you're doing the same thing that they do to get it to squeal. Um, the squeal comes from a couple different things. So that's the first thing you're going to do, right? Yeah. You're going to open that hole up on both sides. I'm, I'm definitely too lazy for that one, but I'll <laughs> some of the other ones. <laughs> and then you're going to take your pliers, uh, which are somewhere on this desk. Yeah. And then I'm going to flatten that out, right? I'm going to flatten that out to make sure that, that that's that's good and flat. I'm going to take my yeah. rivet. So that I to... will do like without yep. taking it off. I'll just take my needle nose and... And sure. roughen up that surface and kind of tweak, like flatten it, make it uneven, right? You just want to rough up that surface so that you don't have a smooth surface. Right. So that's, I'll do that without taking it off the blade. Right. So one thing I do is is I go a step further and I take this, so and I've got my naked buzz bait, and I take a, a file and I'll file the arm. I want that arm really, really, really rough. So now I got a bigger <laughs> hole. I got I got the arm filed, right? Mm-hmm. I've got the blade if I want to knock down the shine. So this is a three eight ounce buzz bait. If you really want a slow buzz bait to slow it down, upsize the blade. You can get mm-hmm. blades from like any tackle place, or if you want to go faster, you take a half ounce buzz bait head, and then you put the smaller quarter ounce buzz bait blade on. You can burn that buzz bait, and it won't blow out. Does that make sense? It's not mm-hmm. fighting the blade. 
or it's a smaller, you know, splash. It's more subtle, but you could really, really burn it. Um, the other thing I'll do is uh, I just take a bead, you know, get them at the fly store. You can get them cheap at the craft store too. Um, and I put it on the front to, to make sure nothing pops in. It's another, it's another point as well. So uh, for, for sound and squeal or clacking or rattle, there you go. I don't know how many tips that was, but that was a lot. Yeah. So do you don't do anything with the rivet? Oh, absolutely, man. Well, usually I'll, I'll take, like, right. I'll, I'll take my plier needle nose to the rivet. I don't take it off, but the one that's on there, yeah. right. I'll roughen that up with my needle nose. So it's scratched that's up. That's what and I do. And bent. Yeah. So you see how that's rounded right there. So what I'll do, this is really hard to see. I'll squeeze as hard as I can around the rivet and I'm completely flattening the surface, mm -hmm. but I'm also putting ridges in it. Maybe you'll be able to see this after I'm done. If I can get a close up. So as I flatten that all the way around, now I'm getting more surface area in contact with the blade, but I'm also getting a rougher edge. And then the last thing I do, you probably can't see that because I don't know if the camera's going to focus, but let's try it. Uh, there we yep. go. You kinda, you kinda, yeah, yep. you kind of yep. see it. Yep. exactly what I do to mine. And, th and this is aluminum. If you can find a steel rivet, mm -hmm. not an aluminum one and not a stainless one, you can rust the steel and there's lots of ways to rust the steel. You can do it faster or slower. You know, if I got all winter, I'd just let them marinate in some salt and they come out completely rusted. And man, you talk about a squealer. There you go, man. So that is the way to like really, really um, get your buzzbait squealer. Yeah. <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, Hook Life says crimp the rivet so it doesn't move. Oh, of course. Uh, That's yep. the last, very last thing you do. Because once you've crimped it, it's tough uncrimping it to get anything apart. But you can yeah. if you. A couple you, people you know. say they soak the rivet in bleach or mm -hmm. vinegar and salt. Somebody told me Coca Cola one time. I guess anything yeah. that will corrode it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that's. I'm too lazy to take it off the buzz bait. So most of my stuff is whatever <laughs> I can do to mess up that rivet and the bottom of the blade so that there's yep. a rough connection. With. So that's that's kind of the the hella the quick hack right the 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 quick and dirty in the in the boat mm -hmm. right it's like. I didn't That's think right. I was going to buzz bait. I threw a couple in my bag. I grabbed my needle nose pliers and I rough up yep. those two surfaces and bend them up. And that'll yep. get you a pretty good squeak pretty soon. Yeah, um, yeah uh, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. No question about it. No question. Yeah, if you throw the shit out of it, 800 casts later, it's squeaking good. Yeah. And by the way, the if you do make the hole like, bigger, if you make the hole bigger. people like holding it out the window or as yeah. you, like. But I've heard, yeah. well, that just is going to wear your buzz bait out prematurely, it, right? Like, it does. If you hold it so long that it starts to squeak, you probably mm -hmm. only got about <laughs> a couple of days in it before it wears out completely and falls apart. But if you're um, derby fishing, you know, you tune up like two of them, man. If you know you're on a bite, uh, you better have a few tuned up in your boat, man. Because, I mean, right out of the gate, you want to start getting bites, man. So derby time, that's the time. I, I was with Wesley Strader. And on the Potomac River, and he had a very tuned up buzz bait. And um, it was so tuned that he got a giant hit from a bass, knocked the blade off. He lost the fish, but now he's out of a buzz bait and he didn't have another one tuned up. And the buzz bait bite was on. That was not a good scene, man. So, but I mean, you could hear it when somebody's buzz bait is tuned. You know what I mean? For and sure. it's absolutely tuned. Yeah. And then maybe some days they don't want the squealer, they want a subtle one. So you got to mm -hmm. let the fish tell you. Right, it's not guaranteed you're going to get more bites. I just like to, to piss the shit out of them, so it, it gives me confidence. I feel like if sure. it's squealing, I'm going to get a bite, you know, whether it's a head knocker or not. Somebody says, uh, somebody might actually make a rusty riveted buzz bait. Yeah, I think Picasso watched my little buzz bait episode four years ago, brought one out. I'm just going to say it. I never seen one on the market until I did that buzz bait show with Travis because I, uh, I, I gave that up a couple times on the show. JJ, the doctor, he, can you repeat what those little orange beads were again? <clears throat> oh, yeah, the Poochie. Poochie. So P U C C I, Poochie beads. That's so right. If I know and that I, what, like, man, just I, online. I think there's a lot of companies that make it, but you know, I like these colors and they were eight millimeter. Sure. And they make them in chartreuse orange and a lot of different colors. Yeah, this yep. one's going to be replay worthy. This one, I think, uh, will be worth watching over and over again. AJ, I will try to do some links. Uh, Eric and I didn't really divulge any of this stuff ahead of time, so I don't necessarily have links prepared. So I might try to. Um, That's right. I don't know what Eric's doing, but I do not have any toenail crankbait lip hacks tonight. So we'll leave that one to Matt Stefan. Maybe Eric. 
I did see Eric eat a Dorito uh, <laughs> uh, left on Travis's stream a couple weeks ago. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I painted know. one even. We'll see where the night takes us. So I painted this lip even more hideous, and TK Stan was like, "What is that? A Dorito on on the end of that crankbait?" So we had a little skit I did. So yeah, TK, I laughed my <laughs> ass off on that one. See, Nick, I buy the accent wheeler buzz, and I still rough up the rivets and do all that on it. So I guess, yeah, um, you should. I don't know. Who's into painted blades on spinnerbaits? Uh, Smallmouth guys, for sure. Let's just say you got a white blade and you'd like to have a little chartreuse on the backside. All you need is nail polish, guys. Pure white. Or let's say you don't have an orange kicker blade. Don't fret it. Just paint the backside. It doesn't flash as much of the color, but that gives them a hint of that color. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool concept. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that trick done. So nail polish, paint the backside. This one's you oily. Might notice a theme. This may not be the last nail polish mention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm running out of nail polish, man. Right. I don't know. That uh, might be the last nail polish hack I got. And then we're going to other right. things. Oh, we got right. frog stuff. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. no nail polish in the frog world. There's some right. Sharpie action. There could be. Um, all right. So... So this is more for the tournament, guys. Yep. Practice, right? Typically in practice, I don't want to catch every single bass that bites, believe it or not. Would you agree, Eric? Uh, agreed, man. Like shaking fish? Like shaking yep. fish on jigs and plastic worms, right? That's pretty easy. But on hard baits, especially on a buzz bait that maybe you invested all this time to tweak, you don't necessarily yeah. want to cut the hook off it, right? No, uh, or right. Roll or the hook it. on a jackhammer, right, to not hook That's a right. fish, right? Yeah. So, right. So <clears throat> when I'm wiring my boat or other projects, I keep the scraps of like the, the strippings. Nice. And those are really good, inexpensive ways. And I just keep them in a little plastic baggie uh, and I'll cover my hooks and practice with those. And I've got different sizes and different colors or whatever, but, and then the, the other thing you can use is, is a shrink wrap, right? You can create little pieces yeah. of shrink wrap and heat those onto your hook as well. These I will say shrink wrap typically is pretty soft. So if you forget that you're practicing and you lean into one on a spinner bait, you'll usually drive that hook through the, the shrink wrap. Whereas this, the, this vinyl is much tougher uh, off a of wire stripping. And obviously yeah. if you don't have a project, you can go find a piece of wire. That's the right size or go buy $2 of the wire and strip all this off. And you'll have enough of these to cover your hooks for till the end of time. Heck yeah. You sh you should start saving like, Buckets full and marketing it, you know, <laughs> just sell them, <laughs> put them in a little package. I did see, uh, I want to say Gambler has something marketed that they just, I think I saw it at Omnia. Yeah. Did they, they like really? The, they actually look a little bit more like the beads that you mm -hmm. showed. Mm -hmm. Um, Mikey Ball did a video on it, but I had, yeah. Uh, the the toddy stopper. Uh, okay, I'll show it here. Yeah, let's those that see are too it, lazy to strip wire. If you want to go to Omnia and use my code, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They have a small oh, standard, that, man. It's just like this little plastic thing, and there's a hole in there, like for your hook to seat in to catch on the yep. barb, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, and Six look at per that, pack. Man. So, at and how much per pack? Piece, or you can go buy 50 cents of wire and make enough to last a lifetime, probably. Your choice. <laughs> That's right. Or if you got an electrician, buddy, man, you're in good shape. Right. Man, crazy. Nice. That's a All good right. one, man. Uh, Critical Gravy says we're already 31 to go with the shrink, with the 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 the, uh, the hook cover already. So well, we're we're well, we're two we're 40 percent of the way almost already, and we haven't even got started. Well. You know what? I'm just going to go with, you just mentioned shrink wrap, heat shrink wrap. So let's show a way to put a rattle in a hair jig using heat shrink. Anybody ever seen this? Now you have. I think, I think I've seen it on a previous stream, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. Check that out. Check that out. Very small on the bottom of the jig. In fact, this jig accounted for my largest Potomac bass ever. 43 degree water pork chunk on the back it's a little modified arky 
but I think the rattle made the difference because as I found cover right there, and I think rattles, rattles in like plastic worms, it's a forgotten thing. People don't take mm -hmm. the time to do it, but I have so many experiences where if I put the smallest, thinnest rattle and I'm doodle socking, so I've got the weight banging and it was before there was tungsten. I'm just mm -hmm. using lead back in the day, that really small worm, worm rattle in, in the back of the tail, Ella shaking it and that's what that's what that's how i caught all my fish that day in 43 degree water didn't catch a ton but when, they were all giants when i was a kid my dad yep. and i were stuffing rattles and guido bugs all the yeah. time not something i do hardly anymore i mean why not put it on the end of you could heat shrink some stuff and put it on the end of a spinner bait right yeah i mean Did and have a rattling spinner bait how you attached it there i guess yeah well it's hard i'd have to deconstruct the hair jig well maybe just, just give us a little close-up of yeah, what you're doing is you're tying it on the hook shank. Okay. Follow me. So you take the the, the you thread the two. Uh, ah, so shrink, basically you and then I'm tying it over a rattle, leave a tag end, right? Let that shrink down to nothing, and then you slip That's it on, right. and then you basically fly tie it onto the hook. You fl you fly tie it, and then you tie your material over that. It's it's very simple. <laughs> and if if you know, I, I know not everybody <laughs> wants to get all the materials that are needed for fly tying. But man, you can do so many things once you have a vice. And there's some really inexpensive vices on Amazon, like 19 bucks and a pair of scissors and, and some thread and a bobbin, and you're in the game. I mean, you can just, I mean, I could show you so many things that I like to hack around with, you know, just adding, just adding, you know, material to a, a, a bobble, a wobble head. Sure. So now I have a wobble head jig and it's very sparse, but it just, there's nobody sells that but you can make it. You know what I mean? You could tie material just about on anything, man. There's another one for you. That's not sold. It's really sparse. There's like what? Seven pieces of really thick rubber on that. So you've got a skirt that just popped off because everybody's lost a banded skirt in their life, right? They get old. Save all that silicone skirting material. And then once you get that vice, you could turn that silicone skirting material. You could tie on jig heads. You can tie on wobble heads. You can tie on anything, man. And turn your stuff into really cool stuff. Like, like right. I'm just going to go with another one because you could have tied some let's, material let's, on this. Let's get, like, just I'm time sorry, man. You need to take a breath. <laughs> got to pace ourselves. I thought we had Maybe to do 50. Says we're already got 20 down. I've only no, got 50 in, on my list. 50 in an down. hour, right? <laughs> um, so a couple things I want to cover. Um, <laughs> I do want to make sure that I don't forget to thank partners arsenal fishing for supporting the stream and the oh, channel yeah. uh there might be some arsenal related hacks coming up the code's flowing down before some of these things might be baits you might be modifying at omnia codes down that's good for actually you know what that code's wrong i need to update the code <laughs> change the gan to feb because it's february 1st today eric did you realize oh, that jeez no i had no clue dude all right and then the other thing for us people close to me in minnesota yeah uh my buddy Dave Sindrich, who was a former guest, um, he is throwing a swim bait only tournament get together, a winter one, February 18th. So that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. What? Uh, so we have a, a place on the uh, Mississippi River that's uh, hot, hot water discharge that we can fish in the winter and catch smallies. I mean, who's that guy yeah. in the picture? That's funny. Yeah, that's just some random dude. I don't know what that... Uh, that's an, <laughs> okay. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be swim baits only. There's no entry awesome. fee. All the, I just put a link in the chat. Uh, if you want to check it out. Oh, I told them I would mention it. Uh, there's going to be like a grill out. A bunch of guys getting together. We're going to throw swim baits in a river in the winter with waders on. Try to catch some small these. There'll be some like video catch weight release stuff or measurement. I don't know exactly. All, it's all on there. There's a bunch of donated prizes. It's not big money or anything, but I'm sure there's some swim baits to win and that kind of stuff. But it's more about a bunch of us getting together, hopefully uh, enjoying some some hot dogs and burgers in the parking lot and, and talking fishing and getting through the winter. So uh, that's the uh, FYAO, which is freeze your you-know-what off swim bait tourney. So there's that. Um, and then I don't want to forget... I missed that. I mean, we have the chat is flying here. Grad 84. 999. Grad, what's chat. up? Super thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, he says VIP Whoa. worthy. So nice. appreciate it. 
Nice. All right. Oh, you can unleash. I, I feel like I should. I'm falling behind. I think I need to do one. Here. No, go. You could do three or um, four, man. <laughs> keep keep these guys efficient, man. I love your efficiency tips. They're awesome. And oh, the economical man. ones, man. The butter lid thing is awesome, bro. Love it, man. Love it. Done it. Done it for years, man. It wasn't on my list. Mm, 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 mm. I guess the one thing that I am pretty keen on is I typically only stock like I don't get crazy with jig head colors. <clears throat> so I typically just have like green pumpkin or natural gray or whatever. But there are times that I do want to color up a Ned or this mm -hmm. is a shaky head chartreuse. And I think you might have even touched on this. But there's a couple yeah. options. I don't have them handy, right? They have the that quick powder paint where you like take a nail or a, uh, not a, uh, a, 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 a lighter, right? Heat it up, yeah. you dip it in, right? Yep. You get a quick, if you want to super cure it, you can bake it in the oven. Um, you can use nail polish. I've got some baby blue nail polish and some red nail polish that I'll do on Ned heads. Yeah. Because I think those are like, if you look back in that, that Ned stuff, that those are like the two colors that Ned himself like really says are like the deal. So yeah. And chartreuse in Minnesota is a big deal. On jig heads for mm -hmm. jig worms and neds. <clears throat> oh, and yeah. I think that's because it resembles a bluegill with that little shark. Yeah. Like it falls pretty quick. I don't think the bass like looks at the chartreuse, but when it's right. falling or when you it's pop visible. it up, it's like that they see that chartreuse in their mind. That speck of chartreuse is a bluegill, is a perch, and it, it makes them right think. on. Right on. I love good one, man. Good one. What else you got? Uh, I'll manage the chat, man. I know you're trying to do both. Oh, yeah. There we go. Gravy's got the new code up there. <laughs> oh, Critical Gravy's got your back. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let me see here. So one that, you know, I don't like to talk about this one. Oh, now we're getting juicy. I thought about saving this for a members only. Right. Because, so this is something you do have. There's probably a way you could manufacture this. But hmm. This is something that I buy. They're hard to find. We like really hard like to find as items a as a jig <clears throat> fish. Mm -hmm. The uh, so they used to be made by a company called Vertical Lures. They made the Jig X and the Sling X and the Tube X. They sure and all did that, stuff. that harness. So I'm a big man. fan of the. Oh, jig that's fish. right. Yeah, man. So this. What? Why don't they bring like, that back, dude? Yeah. So. I, I don't want to really talk about where you can get these because I feel like there's not a, a ton of them in the world. But uh let's see if I have one here. I don't know if I have one. I might have to just break one out and throw it on a jig here. My jig box is, is a mess. I'm not going to lie. No, I, right. that's okay. It's used. It's well used. All right. So you get yourself your favorite Bass Tech jig <laughs> or your jig of choice. Yep. Um, grab one of these little slings out. And to me, this is definitely a, a, a productivity slash cost savings hack. So as a guy that fishes a fair amount of tournaments, um, and this is for your your uh, your chunk slash trailer threaders. If you're mm -hmm. a, a chunk hanger, you can just run to the bathroom quick because this doesn't apply yep. to you. Um, so these, these come with, I feel like I should uh, probably blow myself up here a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> right. It comes, there's a loop. And a tab, and there's two holes. The back hole is actually designed for a rattle, which I rarely use. But the center hole, you thread on the hook. Add a little to your liva. It makes it go over the barb and the um, the collar. And so I typically want to get this on most of my jigs. There's going to be some kind of a, right, the old lead keeper's traditional style. I want to get this stretched over that. Could use a little more saliva. But we got it over. Now it's in place. So now I have this weird rubber thing that makes no sense. So we can combine a bait hack here. So Ooh, we, li we like a two for one. We're combo hack it here. So this is combo a worn out BFE that, thing. that I use for flipping, yep. right? The head's right. all torn up. This is garbage. We might as well throw it away, Eric, right? Yeah, let's throw that away. Hello, what are you doing or saving that thing? Let's trim off the torn piece. Heck yeah. <laughs> 
right? So this pile of baits that's in the, the nice little tray in the camus there where all you know throw all mm. your used plastics. Don't throw them in the lakes. It's bad for the fish, bad for the fishery. Do not throw your soft plastics in the lake, people. Great PSA, then, by the way. Thank you. Trim this up, thread it on your favorite crotch trailer. So whether this is your new, your old one, your recycled one, that's how it would normally be. Now this little tab pulls down over that hook. This thing is locked. Locked it's and loaded. It's not coming off. You can skip it. You can flip it. You can rip it out of the grass. You can do whatever you want. You can yank on four pound largemouth's face. <laughs> that trailer's not moving. You yep. will. They will pull all the appendages off and shred it. So you'll go from getting zero to two fish per jig trailer, and be fixing it constantly as it, you know, slides down the shank of your hook to one that's going to get you probably a limit of fish per bait. And the other thing is you're not going to fix it. So, you know, instead of fixing it every fifth flip or skip, now yep. you're making another cast, which means you're going to make 20, 30, 40, 50 more flips on a good jig day than your buddy, which means you're going to kick his ass. Efficiency, money <laughs> saving tip. Boom. I'll probably uh, save it for uh, the link. We'll probably just go to the members for this one where you can buy these. I don't want too I'm, many people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that's exactly what you do, man. Yeah. JJ, I used you all yours up. So these are these are beyond <laughs> the ones I got from you. If you want the tip, you got to subscribe. All right, what else you got? That was two and one. That was Efficiency, a double. It, that's a double. That's a double. I dig it. Yeah, there's some other people coming out with something. Yeah, the all training's got something similar to coming out with. Um, yeah, well, you know, what are you gonna do? Right. Critical Grave says we're halfway the, through. Buy the cheaper one. <laughs> all right. Yeah, there's literally thousands of hacks, man. Yeah. This could be a 24 hour stream. We're loaded. Uh, it really could. <laughs> it, it absolutely could, man. There's no question about it. Uh. The original name of it is the Vertical Lures Jig Sling. I got a package back there, but I don't want to go get it. I do it for the environment, Thomas. Yeah, Thomas. All these all these bait saving hacks, that's how we afforded a Camus, not by being wasteful. <laughs> yep, exactly. I don't know. We might be able to get Eric on an only only fins some deal. It could happen. There's an OnlyFans thing out there in fishing. Guys do it. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about, Travis. We need to figure out somebody to start making them again. All right. Yeah, um, right. Ch China. The, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe, maybe Bass Tech will have them someday. I wouldn't rule it out. That's true. I guess uh, this one I've definitely talked about a lot, right? The Arsenal. I'm a big fan of the Arsenal Wacky Band. Same mm -hmm. principle here. Yep. Save a bunch of plastics. I like the clear. Some people like the green, the red, the black. I like the right. Sure. This comes a. You think I'd be prepared and have these handy with the tool? Um, one thing I do. So I think the seven millimeter is what fits a five inch stickworm. And the you best use the tool to thread it on. If you get the eight yep. millimeter, I can just thread them on without the tool, which yeah, that's not what you <laughs> when want. I, when I can't find the tool in my boat, uh, <laughs> that have, have both available, <laughs> right? Um, but you can also throw these like you can put these on the head of a Kitek, use them to snug things up on a jig head. There's actually yeah. a lot of different things you can do, uh, with this. I actually, and I actually use like seven millimeter, yes, but I use the eight millimeter more because I don't have to use the tool. Um, right. But you just extend the life. It's kind of the same principle as the jig sling, in my opinion. Yeah. You can use heat shrink tubing as well. You could also yeah, use a straw. You can yep. use a straw, a straw, a straw is really cheap and you're going to save the environment unless you lose your wacky rig. But anyway, uh, a straw and the bigger size straws will fit the bigger size plastics. Sure. But, the, but for like a skinny worm like that, a straw is actually perfect. Yeah. Unless, unless they go to paper straws. And then they <laughs> then you're slinging your wacky and your sink goes flying and sinking down on a dock as that five pounder eats it in the derby. Thanks, Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Spent all night cutting my straw. Then I realized it was dissolvable paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. What else you got? Um, and, and the other thing about the way you're rigging that wacky is that the hook is, I think, in the proper position. With yes, the band, it's in line with the worm, which is great if you're Nico rigging, in my opinion. But yeah. if you're wacky rigging, 
I don't want that hook in line with the worm. I want it just like you showed it. And if you Personally. do prefer it, you can do that, right? Like you can. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Under the band like this. But you're saying you and I both agree we do not prefer our wacky rigs like this. Negatory. We like it perpendicular for better hookups. 100%. And I think, also, and, and I think better skip. And rolls around cover better, deflects off stuff better, I think. I feel like it does. Yep. Nice one. Yeah. McDonald's is going to a lid that doesn't require a straw. So watch out, people. You might want to start stocking up. That's kind of weird. I don't even know what that means. Like a sippy cup? For yeah, basically, men. instead of the hole being in the center of a McDonald's lid, it's on the side. Yeah. So you can either put a straw or you can drink out of it. Like, I mean, it's uh, the plastic lid is more like a tumbler lid where it's the. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, like a coffee deal. Funky. Never seen it. Got to go to Mickey D's, see what's up. It's been a minute. Do got this one. Oh, oh. We'll let you go ahead. I, I feel like I'm okay. Got off a couple there. All right, cool, 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 cool. So if you guys are crappy fishermen, and and you got a bunch of crappy hooks that rusted, well, mo check we're out. We're all trying to be less crappy and suck less, so that we're trying to get better. Check out that sexy Nico right there. So cut the hook off of it, and actually cut it near the hook, you know, bend, and then crimp it with a <laughs> plier, and then you'll have it. It will never come off. You get two things out of that, right? So now it's going to contact the bottom, which VMC's Nico's made that way too. But I love the eyeball, man. I love the colors of these crappy jigs. You can get lime truce, you get really funky colors, like bassy colors, like old school colors that you don't see anymore, man. And it's a painted one. So again, I don't even have to use my nail polish. What do you think about that, Brown Baco? It's like a skirt like that, but in a jig head, right? different jig heads they got all those crappy hot colors and it really gives it's visible to them right it brings a target to them it's kind of like the same concept right. with the painted right. ned head but now you got a painted nico head right or neko nico whatever richard greco okay there you go man yeah that was my so I, I think just building on that one expanding yeah, on that one so if you've got like older it. older crappie jigs older ned heads that maybe are half rusted same Maybe thing. the hook point broke off. You can just convert those into Nico weights by right taking a pliers, bending it over, exactly cutting right. it off, putting just, a little hook right, and then you can use that as a Nico. Yeah, I mean, people, yeah. Just people, do, people, do, companies sell those, but you probably got mm -hmm. old stuff rusting around in tackle boxes that you can convert mm -hmm. into Nico weights. Yep, yep. I like the eyeballs and the paint, and certainly the net head would do the same right. thing. So right? you can, yeah, but you but can take those jig heads, recycle them. Oh, and for sure. Fancy, right? Then you can paint them, right? Or that's right, that's right. But it's. But to your point, also, you can buy a bunch of crappie jigs for a fraction uh, of what they charge fraction. for Nico weights. Yeah. I mean, what is it? Five something a pack, but you can get like on, on eBay, you could go cuckoo with it, man. I mean, and they got the right size, one sixteenth, one eighth, you know, three sixteenths. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm not Nico and much heavier than that because I don't. Yeah, you don't care water. how crappy the hook is. Nope. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it could be a gold Aberdeen thin as crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Or get your buddy who crappy fishes a lot and say, hey, those are really rusted, bro. Give them to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. Another good one, man. I like it. And I like it. Yeah, I guess, you know, back to the recycling plastics, right? Like, oh, yeah. The, uh, when you're, when you're, uh, when your Senkos do give up your yum dingers, right? Like the tails. Yep. But the other thing is don't let it stop there. Like a chigger craw, you tear the craws off. What's yeah. left? The body of a craw typically makes a good Nico or a, a Ned, right? Like, right. Just about every plastic, when you tear all the appendages off and like, so like, I remember the one day I was out with my dad, we absolutely crushed them this June. And I was literally tearing, like, rather than like, we were out fun fishing. So rather than just burning yeah. through piles of XO Neds or whatever, um, I was just going through the pile and just making Ned baits on the fly, catch four or five fish more out of every one of those baits Yep. And then moving on. I mean, I even used uh, a, a piece of K-Tech, like with the paddle tail gone. Use that as a net. Yeah. I mean, anything can be a Ned when you think about it. Like Honestly, for sure. There are no rules. Same thing oh. with the drop shot. You can drop shot well, anything. You finally rolled out of bed and showed up. Oh, my. What's up? What's up? What's up? You are here. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> A viewer hack, earring backs, good what? for a lot of this. Could use those as like, oh yeah, uh, trailer keeper, uh, absolutely holders. Same, same good like the one. beads and the other thing. Like that would be another good, inexpensive. Uh, those little plastic 
just steal your wives or your girlfriends. Nice one, yeah. Chris Flay. Don't get in trouble. Don't let her see you, though. That's awesome. And her nail polish, Brown Baco. Yeah. Just grab some yeah. of your girlfriends. Ringworms, the Grande Bass. Now you got a ring, Ned. Absolutely. Anything. It's all available. Love it. Use your Love imagination. It. Love it. So I got I got one thing here while we're uh what you got we're getting a place to get in breath here. Yeah. Um if you didn't know this, Eric, you might know this. Tell me, but you actually have a website. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you want to mention that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> it's uh it's yeah, it's Epic Eric's Bass Lab, man. I do a lot of collaborations. Um Custom custom uh, painted crankbaits by TK Stanley exclusively at Tackle Craft down Alabama. I think he's the best painter in the nation. Uh, the the balsa baits that I sell, um, they're limited runs. They're from Marty Burns, aka the Big M, and um, a very successful spinner bait. It's a River Rat spinner bait. It's uh it's it's one up top right there. It's uh it's got three tournament wins to its name on on my title rivers, and uh, it's small profile. Uh, I'll break down the bait for you real quick because it's, I think, worthy of doing it. Um, so you see the, the the orange blade practicing what we preach here. We are like, practicing. So a lot of these baits here. are inspired from bait hacks and modifications. If you they really tell. are, they really are, man. Um, like uh, so. So here's the newest one that's up. You know, limited run of coleslaw, and uh, this is the thumper version, a little bit bigger Colorado. But this is, uh, you know, this is a very compact half ounce. Right. It's a hidden weight deal. Um, you know, the 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 weight of the bait is hidden in the shank uh, built on a four out mustad. You can see the crystal flash because I'm a fan of crystal flash gives it a little glint and uh, haywire twist on the front. I feel like the line doesn't write up a little bit more positive hook set, harder to bend out thin wire for maximum vibration. Must add ultra point hook, man. So dynamite little build. And uh, comes in different blade configurations. And um, this one sold out really quick. Hella, you'll probably appreciate this. This one was called Ditch Melon. It's gone, but um, it, it, it's, a, it's an OG color from Texas. My buddy mm -hmm. Sean Hernke said that Elroy Kruger was the guy that's giving credit for coming up with the color. And um, that's a bad little dude right there. A little faded out orange, if you will. So that's the river rat, man. Yeah, so bait collaborations. I also did a little shaky jig worm. It's a combination. I'll hold one up. This is the Perch Tastic. It's a combination jig, shaky head. I made these down in the Bass Lab and then kind of teamed up with Brian at Brian's Custom Tackle. And um, it's very He's sparse. from Minnesota, right? He's, yeah, he is from Minnesota, man. Little crystal flash in the tail. Round, not rubber, but silicone, which has a lot of spring to it. And some crystal flash and a little bit of uh marabou on the front end for just you know life and breathing. And some of the some of the um strands are cut short, finesse jig while. And you could also uh thread it on here because there is a mono keeper on the shank, or you could fish it Texas style. The and the hook is just sticky, sticky sharp, recessed, recessed line tie, which I really like on a ball head jig. And um, pair it up with your favorite worm. I do have a worm that it's one of my favorites, a core shot. But, uh, you know, I love a laminate, too. I'm, I'm a freak when it comes to laminate. And if I was going to dip this tail, here's my next hack. Are you ready? I'm ready. I double. Oh. I double I, I'm a double dipper. Are you? I'm before a double we, dipper. Before you do it, I did put the link in the description. It's basslab.bigcartel.com if anybody wants to check out the website. Now let's go oh, to man. the hack. Hey, Hella, thank you, man. I wouldn't, I yep. wouldn't even have thought of that. Um, so I, I'm going to give credit to Pete Gluzik. Uh, the dean from the Bass University, he turned me on to JJ's because for years sure. I was the regular dye guy. I do like their colors too. I'm a spike it guy, right? Everybody, I think everybody grew up on spike it. So spike it. Here's your spike it. I think their orange garlic is awesome. Mm -hmm. But when you combine it in a double dip with JJ's, which is way hotter, it's way hotter color. You double dip the tail, that thing glows like nobody's business. Um, I made Greg De Palma a believer, hella. I fished with him and Mike Powers, who invited me uh, uh, to the Ike Foundation, uh, the Ike Tournament, Ike Foundation Tournament on the Delaware River. And we caught all five fish on one bag of plastics, drop shotting, 
They were my plastics. They were double dipped the night before, double dipped the night before JJ's and spike it. It was a French fry and the tail was dipped orange. And every fish we weighed in came on that bait. I had all five keepers with 30 minutes to go. Greg goes, give me one of those centipedes and powers in the back goes, I'm rigging up a drop shot. I'm like, dude, we got like 20 minutes left. And we came in, we almost won the boat. We did come in third, a couple ounces out of second. Pretty cool, man. Makes a difference. Double dip. There you go. Double dip. Yeah. Uh, JJ's is hits hard. It's the, it does. It, it dies harder, brighter. It smells more potent. Yep. It's harder to get out of your carpet and clothes when you do spill it. One hundred percent. Open the lid slowly because it is producing a gas. No question yeah. about it. And have some neutralizer on hand yeah. if you're working with it. I that's why I prefer to dip the night before. Right. Especially if I know uh, it's, you know, X tournament. This was a summertime tournament. The bite is tough. You know, De Palma was putting his buzz bait in places I, I couldn't even think of. We, and I knew he was going to get a big bite. Just never happened. He was throwing a, I was throwing a spinner bait, little river rat style. And, uh, you know, jig was in play. But the, the best fish came on the centipede double dipped. Nice. All five fish were weighted. All seven keepers we called twice. Greg made a call after he put the centipede on and Mike, Mike caught a fish that I saw and I, I, I thought I had it bite, but uh, yeah, it was very cool, man. It was a thrilling tournament. We thought we won the boat, dude, because the weight we had, we, he, dude, we were right there. One more bite away. Crazy. Oh, really? Right at an hour. We're well above pace. So we're, we're good. We're doing well. Okay. Double dip guys. Be a double say, dipper. As a co-angler, if you're not going to pre-dip, I think the spike at markers are the way to go. <laughs> When you're in somebody yeah, else's man. boat, I mean, uh, <laughs> I would. I, I, the, these have saved my butt, and I'm. Yeah. I, I'm sure you guys know this, but in a pinch, if you want to take a TK Stanley bait, did I just set you TK. up? Did I just did I set you yeah, up? Yeah, you, you you really did. If this actually works, you got to let it dry. It won't last, but maybe a little bit. But you know, if you don't want to carry a paint marker on somebody else's boat. In a pinch, you could add color to the bottom of your crankbait and it lasts. I did this with Chartreuse recently uh, with a TK bait, and uh, I feel like it got me some more bites because I just want a solid Chartreuse belly. Not that whisper on the chin. I just wanted it fat and ugly on the bottom. Yeah. I mean, even regular magic markers will do the same. Sharpies. Sharpies. Right? In a pinch, Car you can get a couple hours a day out of a that's Sharpie right marker. So if you just want to no question about it, play around with adding some red on the gills, some orange on the throat, some chartreuse sure. on the sides. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't have to look pretty. No question. It doesn't have to look pretty. Not everything in nature is perfect. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah. Especially when you're painting, you know, with nail polish, you think it has to look great. Shaky jig will be back in stock. Man, I got some more being tied um, now, so um, they went quick. So I think if you follow Epic Eric's Bass Lab on Instagram, you'll be the first to know, I bet. That's right. That's right. I generally, yeah, I generally, you know, post it up there when they're back in stock. So, yep. We got the bruiser. We got the bruiser coming next. Here's the bruiser. The bruiser. The bruiser. It's the black and blue one. And um, that was the first color I tied. And this is a high float worm, by the way. Um, which is really nice. Super, 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 super flexible. Got a lot of action to it. So it's the right worm for it. So yep. it's winter, spring. Yep. What, uh, jerk bait season for some? Oh, oh, I think it might be. So a lot of people talk about lead strips, lead weight, wrapping hook shanks. But a lot of times you can just add a second split ring. Right or two, one or two extra split rings, not necessarily connected nice. to the hook. Mm -hmm. And you can put a red one on. You can put a brass one. Right. You can add a little. So a couple things here. You can very ever so slightly tweak the weight or how a, a jerk bait or a crankbait will sit by adding a split ring, which will affect the sink, how it floats, how it reacts. It's also going to give you a little more noise, real subtle. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a little more hardware banging, which mm -hmm. in a lot of baits, right? Hardware clicking against each other is a lot of where your sound comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is actually a red split ring that's kind of faded out but you could you can go black you can go red you could go gold you can go silver so you can you get an ever so slight color accent weight modification noise 
um, yep. and something that's compact and doesn't, you know, wrapping lead wire, I feel like uh, could affect your, your hookup. Um, I'm not a big fan of, you know, lead can this, you know, easy on, easy off. It doesn't do anything to the bait. You're not leaving any residue. Um, uh, if you don't like it, you cut it off or unthread it. Um, so right on, man, I'll, uh, I'll play off that one. So with your spring flat sides, um, a lot of people don't throw a suspending crankbait. Jerk baits are suspending, mm -hmm. yep. and it's a suspension, slow rise, slow sink, depending upon how you weighted it. That is part of the magic of it. And so I'll I'll tell you guys that do not sleep on a suspending, slow sinking, or slow rising crankbait in the spring. It will pay dividends. My biggest upper bay tournament bass uh was a lunker award um six eight on the upper bay uh throwing a spinning rod flat side eight pound test crank and rip rep bank and um you just want to take a little lead i'm not a fan at all of the suspense strips or the suspense dots they never seem to stick for me so i go buy lead tape for tennis rackets or golf golf clubs it comes in a really big roll. You get a ton of it and you just add and then you got to test it at home. You know, try to match your water temperature. Have a little thermometer or whatever. It doesn't have to be exact. And if you get really goofy and you don't like the silver lead, like Hella said, take your nail polish brown bake and paint right over it. You or your marker. It red, or you can paint it orange or, or anything you want to do. That's exactly right. Uh, you could do it on the fly, add it in the boat, whatever. Uh, but let me tell you something. If you've never fished a suspending crankbait or a slow sinker, um, you're missing out. And I like to worm it in the spring. It's a pull, stop, pull, stop. Once I contact the cover, I stop. So if I'm hitting a stump, a rock, piece of wood, whatever, if I've contacted a big piece of cover, that bait's slowly rising away from it or sitting right there, and they cannot take it. That is a big mm -hmm. fish tip for you guys in the spring. There you go, man. Um, yeah. So also, right, you could do extra split rings on a crankbait. It depends how, like, fine-tuning it. You could also I'm putting bigger. a lot of I weight. People also talked about bigger hooks. Bigger hooks, sure. Your wire hooks. Those are all yep. things you can play yeah. around with. Um, I don't. I don't like the action so much. So, or a bigger hook. It, right. Maybe I'm getting snagged a little bit more. So I like that number five gamakatsu on some of my flat sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might step up to a four on a shad wrap or something. But I really like the way that the, it makes the bait head down. It keeps that head down out of cover. You know what I mean? So, and, yeah. and plus smaller hooks, I'm coming through cover a little bit better and staying snack. Yeah. And that means and those are all things to consider, but you think about what you want to achieve, right? That's so right. You, will the bigger hook affect the action? Will it the affect action. the cover? Yes. How it comes, right? So yeah. those are all. Absolutely. Um, right on, man. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so we can combine the hole punch with the lead tape and make your own dots. Boom. I love it. Oh my God. Brilliant. That's um, freaking so awesome. Treble hooks and split rings. One of the things that I've really started doing on top waters, especially where sometimes your hookups aren't always the best. And yeah, you can really do this with any hard bait, but I yep. do, I, on the, especially on the tail, Two. I'll add a second yeah. split ring mm -hmm. in line so that it, when the fish is fighting, right, you get a lot more rotation and less torque for the fish to get That's leverage. Right. Also, That's right. It's going to let that hook sink a little further in the water, that tail to get down. So short strikers, it's going to, I mean, it's not a lot, but, you know, oh, yeah. fishing, uh, success can be a real fine line sometimes between uh, hooking a fish properly and not. So a lot of times I will add a second split ring, especially on top waters and things like that. Um, and look at that gold, almost red. It used to be red gamakatsu yeah. hook. I guess, should we hella. talk about red hooks while we're at it? Uh, yeah. Hella, let's talk about hooks as attractors. Yeah. Hella with so, the red. I love it, man. Man, after my People own heart. been around know that almost always on top waters, I'm always going to put a red hook on the front. I this love it. This one's game game worn. She's, she's turned mm -hmm. gold. Um, but I do believe that I get more fish committing to the front of the bait yeah. on especially top waters. And I would say up to things that maybe go four, five, six feet deep at times, I will put a red hook on the front. But right almost on. always on a top water. Oh, yeah. A front hook will be red. I really believe right it. on. Yep. But not that this one's ever gotten chewed or you know, I mean oh no, no you can you can believe what you can that. see or not, right? But uh <laughs> for show sure. 
get that one nestled back into the old bait wrap here. Yeah, I, I believe in red. Like, I added a red feather treble to my black Rico, and, I mean, it might have caught a few fish. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> you can yeah. start to see the bone down there. I just thought, I just took a regular black feather that I bought, and then with my fly tying vice, I added two things. I added a little crystal flash and a bleeding red feather treble. So, mm -hmm. and I believe that makes a difference. I have that red treble stuck in the floor carpet now. <laughs> oh, I've had so many things. I got a die mark behind me, man, from dying baits on my bench. And I was dying baits on top of baits, so it didn't really balance hella. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I just I think I got to get it out because otherwise my socks will end up in this treble hook and then we're going to have a different problem. <laughs> oh, God, no. With my yeah. toe attached to it. Yeah, my nightmare was I was going to come on the street, man, and like sponge some bait with hooks in it. And like, yeah, the sponge is really great if you got hooks because it'll just go in a sponge and drive one into my finger. <laughs> JP, there you go, man. He knows what's up. That right. Rio Rico foot hazard. Yep. All right. How we doing? Right. How we doing? Who's who's keeping count again? Uh, I think we were down into the teens left to go already. That's great. And I haven't even gotten like here's the bait hack tray. I mean, I've made a little bit of progress, but there's so yeah. much. I mean, I'm only like halfway through my list. That's crazy. Hell, you better go like do three or four. Okay, well, I gotta cross them off. Actually, we, we got a couple here. Um, okay. What is that? Yeah, yeah. We'll do a real easy one. Kind of a nifty one. Chatterbaits. Does anybody throw chatterbaits or swim jigs? Do you think anybody here does that? All right. So. Oh, yeah. Most uh, most of the chatterbaits bladed jigs that I throw yep. have one or two little wire keepers. Most of my swim jigs that I throw have that little wire keeper, right? With the mm -hmm. so to get more life, right? Out of uh I guess we'll, we'll use a, a swim on here. Oh, oh, okay. Right? There you go. So you're, you thread this on, and as I approach that, I twist it 90 degrees as I thread yep. it on, and then twist it back. This one's actually a little bit worn out, but yeah, then your that. entry hole is not the same as it back. You're going to get a little more grip. So, I mean, this grip. is not like you're never going to lose a trailer, but I feel like you're going to get I don't know, 20% more you, life? Yeah. Something like that more. out of the, like there, twisting there 90 degrees before you go over that wire keeper. I like it. Lock it on. I like it. Good tip, man. Coming up nice and very timely. It's about to be chatterbait season where I'm going down to Florida. We're, we're, the ice is a little thick for chatterbaits here. Yet. I know, man. Yeah. I know. Hey, I, I got to step back because I forgot that this next hack kind of involves the, the the throat weighting of the, the crankbaits in the spring. Sure. So you're going to hang up. You, you hang up at crankbaits no matter if you weight them or not. So this is a cheap tip, man. So I buy a two-ounce flat sinker like this. And um, what I do, I'll bend this out. I take my snips. Real quick, let me get my snips. And so... I've already cut this one because, you know, just pretend that I cut it right there as close as I can to the lead. So I snip okay. it and then I take my, uh, where, where did I just put that? Hella. Damn, there it is. Sitting on my tug life sticker. And then I bend that out a little bit, that little brass piece, because it is brass. You can bend it out. I slip the snap on inside the ring and then I'll take my needle nose and I'll jam it into the lead. You follow me? Tighten that up so, it, back so it closes yeah. the hole. Exactly. I keep these in my pocket. I keep a couple in my pocket. And then once you get snagged, you just flip that over your line, clip it back, slide it down on semi-slack, and you get right over the bait, right? And this is a plug knocker. It's cheap, and it works so many times. I've saved so much money and time because you're it's in your pocket. It's not one of those big old retrievers you got to get out with the line and the dog on it, you know? Look, mm -hmm. if you if you got an expensive one, you might have to get your lure retriever out. But that is a quick tip when you're going cranking. You need to have like three or four of these in your pocket for a day. And those are just like you, catfish sinkers, or that's it, man. It's just a flat two ounce sinker. So you're just you know? putting a, a clip on it, right? That's it, just a snap. Could, not I, a could I, if I was too lazy to cut it and bend it apart, could I just use the 
I could put a split ring in between it, right? Too. You could, but it. then how are you going to get your split ring on your line? Because it has to go over your line. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm saying like to connect. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You could put a split ring on it, sure. So instead sure. of like opening it up, I could use a split ring to connect my. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. No. It's a. Yeah. It's a one hundred percent. Lake Vermilion would eat it all. That's why I go. just throw a stupid tube and it doesn't get hung up as much, Marty. Um, <laughs> yep. There you go, man. According, we're, we're in the 40s already, according to John. Um, yeah, I, I've seen the people that tie the braided split man, rings. I would, I would like to do that, but I, I just can't bring myself to do it. I'm a little lazy for that. I'm not going to lie. Me too. I wish somebody could do it for me. Yeah. I bet you, I bet you uh, your boy Brian would. Yeah, you could do it. That'd be yes. a lot of time, though. Can you Banger? imagine? Yeah, you got a lot of crankbaits. That's <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we've already covered today, uh, Hella's reuse of baits in the bait bin and the Camus. Yeah, that that's that's a big that's one. That's true. That's true. Um, true, true. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I think things like yeah, you can buy cheap catfish carp sinkers, add a clip to them. There's there are different ways to uh, to get that done. I'm just going to let people marinate on this for a second. <laughs> what is it going to do? Oh, man. I don't we, know. We haven't even got to frogs yet. I know. I know, dude. But, hey, I want to I wanna just make one note. Since you're a Gami fan, did you know that Gamakatsu makes a silver hook? I mean, I kind of – I don't think they're easy to buy, but I think a lot of – like They're not. Uh, like, I, I would guess to venture some of those, like, JDM – like yep. I know the yellow magic comes with some super sharp silver stupid. hooks. Wouldn't it's be surprised just, me if those were gamakatsu. You know what I mean? They're, like, yeah, they're stupid. I think they're built different than a gamakatsu, but um, it's interesting. Old school dudes, like old school dudes, the old school dudes before live scope dudes, before like side imaging dudes, like flasher dudes. If it was a shad crankbait, they were putting a silver hook on it. Mm -hmm. Hooks as attractors to match the hatch. Because you got to figure when it when it's going through, if you got a plain white crankbait, you get a little bit of flash with that hook, whether it's red, gold, silver. Anyway, interesting, right? Mm -hmm. The hook as a tractor. So, no, none of the hooks stay red forever. No, but Eric, why don't you? I like Chris, that though. Yeah, why don't you tell him what you think of that? What? what uh, because then I get a little gold and red, and I'm going best of both worlds. Because who in this world doesn't like gold? Man, right. it just gets better. Like on my minus ones, when I'm catching them, jamming it through the grass, the golder that hook gets, the better it seems to perform. I, isn't that true, Ella? It's wild, man. But you always have some red on it. Uh, Aaron, yes. Swim jigs, bladed jigs, you can use that same jig sling on that. Absolutely. Mm hmm Yep. JP Harrell says he likes putting a silver hook on any bait with a mirror finish. Very cool. I like it. Gold member, Sean Lai. Word. What's the what's the little wrench mean on people's names? Oh, uh, that means they're moderators. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so they've got the little like little symbol with a circle. That yeah. means they're members. Okay. Actually, you'll on your screen, if you're watching on YouTube, they'll have little fish next to them. Yeah, yeah, okay, got it, got it. The ones got with fish, cool. those are members. The one with wrenches are moderators. Okay, and if they have a wrench and a fish, they're a member mom moderator. <laughs> I'm the see. <laughs> That's right. Sean and Tim. What's up, Tim? I like it, man. Our right. friend Steven says he thought they were mechanics. All right, I got a, <laughs> another thing to share. Um... Yeah. Yeah, we got some good frog ones, man. I got one maybe I don't think you've ever seen. What? That's a big challenge. All I don't right. know that I've ever shown it. What do you got? St. Jude, good job, man. So St. Jude, uh, big, Children's big Hospital, fan. cancer, right? Uh, I think everybody's yeah. probably been touched with that at some point. I'm actually mm -hmm. potentially working on a partner to fish it myself um, this year. They're doing their 25th anniversary tournament. Last year, they raised $750,000 in a single tournament with 75 people fishing this year. They're hoping to fill the field at a hundred for the 20 verse and get a million dollars raised this yep. year. So, uh, Bart and Matt Pangrak, 
uh, are doing a fundraiser in New Prague, Minnesota on February 11th. So Pangrex driving up from Oklahoma to Minnesota for this event. So if you're in the area, this is the details. Uh, I told them I'd shout it out. There's a bunch of details and prizes and all kinds of things. Look into it. If you're in the area, look into it. I'm not going to go through all. I know he sent me a bunch of notes, or if you want to follow up, I can send you a link. But uh, check this out. There's going to be a, a, as a brewery. You can meet Panger or Bart, depending on who you're a bigger fan of in person. Hang out, talk fishing, some fellowship, and, and raise some money. So, Very cool. Very cool. Then, Such a great uh, cause, man. I like that yeah. you're doing that. And then, and I'll flash this up with the actual code for Omnia because I fixed that while we're while we're, oh, while nice. we're getting our breath under it. You know, getting yeah, man. You know, um, I bought some uh, flora from them. I think I thought I thought I used your code because I saw a post and you say you can save money. I'm like, yeah. damn, I'm going. Yeah, that was a nice. Thank you for saving me money. Uh, Bart's from New Prague, so that's why it's there. Uh, Got it. Where is New Prague? Uh, just south of Minneapolis, a little bit. Okay. Got it. Darius going to Kentucky Sunday and Monday. I'm doing better tonight. I'm saying people's names. There you go. <laughs> uh, Trying to make up. Let's see. Oh, so. How do you become a member of Hella Bass? Because Will Perryman wants to know. There should be a link right down somewhere near the join button. If you're on mobile, you might have to hide the live chat to see it. Um, but yeah, and it's uh, a couple bucks a month to support the, the channel at a higher level. So, and then I do yeah. a member only stream. I can't forget, we were going to do this MTV boxing tonight, too. I gotta, I mean, that's right. Do you think we could come? Do you think we could do some on the fly bait hacks for what's in the box? I think, that, I think that'd be really cool. What let's do you just, got? Let's just get that out of the way before we forget. Why not? More, ah. I mean, should we look at tackle, Eric? Bend your arm, like oh, yeah, right. Oh. Twist my arm to look at some new tackle, man. Open that box. Open that so box. We'll take Open the mystery box. tackle box. I don't. I might have forgot to paste the link. I'll paste it in the description afterwards. But there's a link. There's a code if you think you want it. Great gift for people getting into fishing. Um, but they do support the stream so that we can bring it to you in 1080p. So we thank them for that. Nice. I did not set up the extra bait cam tonight, so I'm just gonna have to bear with it tonight. I love the bait right. cam, by the way. In the box, ooh, hmm, interesting. So the first one is the the Guggen Clutch. Get rid of this stupid plastic bag. Uh, I mean, good color for the season coming up. It's coming up for sure. Yeah, it's about <clears throat> to be the season to throw a lipless in this color. Yep, I've never thrown the clutch. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yep, me either. What the, what would what would be your first bait mod to a bait like this, Eric? Red treble on the front and double split rings. There you go. I might just consider to take, increase your hook. Pretty shiny. I might consider taking your uh, your foam. You block better to take it. this. You I can't see it, but I'm seeing it shining now in the package. I would foam that thing up, man. I'd hack it up, rash right. it up. All right, not a bad bait for the season coming up here. This is a bait that I've been, I've heard decent things about this. I have not fished it myself. Oh, uh, is it the Jabberjaw? Fishing Jabberjaw. I have not, the... but I'm I'm curious. Yeah. I bought some of the access things sent six cents access. I fully intended to do a like comparison video that I never got around to. Yep. But it's got a movable. Let me see if I can get this out so people can see it. You know me, I'm paying the blade. <laughs> <laughs> Twist my arm. I'm putting some paint on that thing. So it's kind of a sexy, I don't know what they call the color here, but it's definitely a sexy shad looking color. Yep. No, yeah, more of a, I guess it's more of a uh, greenback. So that's a, yeah, I mean, maybe a gizzard. But yeah, this gizzard, metal sure. blade, right? Mm -hmm. So that. From what I hear, has the potential to give it a little more unique hunting, rolling action and and sound, right? And sound for sure. Yeah, I mean that's definitely. I mean, listen, listen to that thing. It's like if kiki, I cover kiki, up kiki, kiki. everything else. Yeah, dude. That's and plus it's metal. Can you imagine yeah. what that sounds like on rock? The durability, teen, teen, teen. right? Don't have to worry about grinding it down. Absolutely not. I mean, we're in a bunch of those old walleye baits like metal lip, the hot and tot, and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, and guys would. 
troll that and catch bass sometimes. I don't know. I'm not a walleye guy, but I mean, you hear the stories. Call Travis and ask him. Buzzjet just signed up. That's right. He could answer the question. Yeah, I think there, Colby, there are some underwater videos of the Jabberjaw. You'd have to think. One of them shot an underwater video. Olive Shad is the color. So that's, a, that's a pretty decent bait. I, I, that's been something I've been meaning to try that I haven't pulled the trigger on. Um, I mean, it's got my attention. You got to let us know how lip. did it go, man. It does have a big lip. I mean, I, you could debate. You know, there's a little bit of back and forth between 13 and, and 6 cents on who, whose idea that really was. <laughs> so it was some aside. dude that had a... It was some dude that had a patent on it that expired. Right. So there is some innovation there. And then somebody brought it to the market. Um, yeah. So Jabberjaw, thank you for becoming a member. That's awesome. It's much appreciated. Another one. Uh, R&M Stevens. Look at that. Oh, yeah. People are. Uh, so for both uh, R.M. Stevens and Jabberjaw, both of them Team Hella, we have a little uh, little thing for that. What do you do? One of us, one of us, one of us. <laughs> Welcome to the game. That's that's what Darius King was referring to. Nice. <laughs> if you can't have fun, like then what's the point? Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Are there any baits that you fish straight out of the package with no mods? Oh, tons. Yeah. I mean, trimming skirts and stuff but like it, that. It, it, it's probably not as many because, right, like jigs, I'm always trinking with the skirts, right? I'm always... You know, brush uh, one guard, of my favorite, you know, put right? My jigs away, I guess, while we're talking. I don't know. I mean, look, a one, a, a lucky craft 1.5 back in the day, I wouldn't touch it. I was just, yeah, you want to, you want to change the hooks? No, yeah, for sure. I hate lucky craft hooks. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you got me there. All right, a zoom trick worm. Oh, I got to dye the tails. Are you damn gonna it. dye the tail? Uh, a Yamamoto Senko. Oh, no, I rough it up. Oh, damn, what else now? So, no, uh, nothing. You know, a jig, right? I typically, one of the things I do is I split it. And I V it with my thumb, right? Yep. Like, yeah, I fan I like it out that. and thin it out, but I'll V yep. that out. So that's going to make it a little wider. I so now you got on a space stream for saying that for the hook to come through and then it's a Perfect. little wider. So it's more likely to roll around a piece of cover without sticking the hook point. That's right. Because that was the concept of fanning it out. The jig right. wouldn't fall on its side, right? The guard but would this be way you maintain it. more of the integrity and strength. That's exactly right. And you, you get the, the more deflection, and but there's a space for the hook to come through. Um, I don't know. Good like, point, man. I'll I'm sure there's something, but I'm always, we're, we're always tinkering. It's, it's just... I'm just, I'm just, just throwing up the June bug crankbait because somebody asked like 30 minutes ago, and I'm going to forget if I don't show it. There you go. June bug. I was the first. So if anybody comes out with June bug, they copied me. <laughs> <laughs> what did Tim say? I missed it. Gobble, gobble. One of us, one of us. There you go. All right. So we mod everything. Pretty much. <laughs> Not at all. That's why we're doing uh, a hacking show. Well, this is so we got two Guggen baits. That's a little over the top for them. Uh, swim jig? The swim quarter on swing, the grass hero swim jig. Okay. I don't know. What, is it's it got a clear, clear weed guard. Weed guard. I see that. Okay. I'm pretty particular about uh, I get most of my swim jigs from the people in Wisconsin and the cross that hand tie and hand oh, what is that? Some some or what is it called? Yum, well, yum. I mean, there's a couple of them, like uh, you know, Bravarni, Super K, you know, Lethal Weapon. Like I'm pretty like I yep. you know that that's that that genre is kind of where I get my swim jigs from. Mm -hmm. And what's so the hook in it? Oh, Daiichi, and, good oh, hook. The, <laughs> in this one, I have no idea. No, no. No, no, no. The, the ones you're using. Uh, they vary. Some of them do Gamagatsu. Some do Mustad. Some do they yeah. have different. But they're almost always like a custom angled. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a 30. It's, just, it's like a 42.37 angle. Yeah, they all have like their custom. Yeah. So Sure. Sure. Um, nice. It's interesting. They gave us one of each color, a two pack of Daihachi hooks. Look at that. Red and black. And they're not okay. the same size three. Yacht. Those are definitely two different size hooks. 100 percent i do i'm very critical of the mtv box that they need to put more hooks in there okay um this is uh, this i have not seen this before the ten thousand hmm. fish right they've done the yoda worm and yep. the koshi the bug one. which are pretty good baits that's right this is the the tickle tail 
Never. Oh yeah, I saw that the other day. It's kind of spunk shadish, I guess. That's probably what yeah. compared to. And, it, so and it's ribbed. And it's trailer. ribbed, right? It's ribbed, right? Yeah. Bladed jigs, shaky heads. Um, mm -hmm. I need to fix my cameras. I need to uh, do something here. Let's see here. There's a way for me to fix this focus issue from my Logitune. It's a little block in on. Yeah. All right. Now we're back on manual focus. So interesting. Look, I mean, it's like a uh, a sun gill. Yeah. Which is a pretty popular. I mean, I'd throw that. I could. I could find a use for that. That's mm -hmm. that's not a bad bait. They're yodel mm -hmm. worm. So it is a, an extension of the yodel worm tickle tail. Yeah. A big drop shot. Yeah. Shaky head. There's a lot of things to do with that. Sure. A Carolina rig. <laughs> Split shot. I split shot that. You split shot much, Skella? Uh, Mojo. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's the uh, grass version of the split shot. Right on. Mm -hmm. A little bit of it. There's some ski crack similarities there for sure. It, it looks a little bit like the uh, ski crack bellow shad probably. Mm hmm Yep, I saw that. Justin says he's got one of just or your uh, DT June bug DT sixes. Oh, that's awesome, man! I only painted one. That's one of one. Oh, better better hold, better not throw that in a pikey situation, Justin. That's one of one, man. That's one of one. Was that an man, auction or a giveaway, or how did he? How did it's, he? Uh... I I think I auctioned it. I don't know. I think I auctioned it. And, and it's June bug. It's got a little red in it too, man. Just a little hint of red, um, man. Just to yes, make Mike. That I have up, used it up a little bit. The Queen Tackle Switchblade. I do like them. Do you? Yeah. I got the blades. I've never used them. I uh, <laughs> they work pretty good. Um, yeah. I like to keep some in my box, right? Okay. It gives me flexibility, so that like any jig I don't need shadow. to carry. Uh, uh, I mean, like right. I got plenty of threes and half ounce jackhammers and a few other bladed jigs. Sure. Eighty percent of the time, that's all I need, right? Yeah. But if I carry some switch blades and then I got my jig box with some three quarter ounce tungsten or one ounce, yeah. right? Like I can make it kind of gives me that flexibility. I don't have to worry about stocking a thousand bladed jigs. Sure. If I carry a few sure. switch blades, well, then we can do an on the fly mod bait hack, build mm -hmm. your own. So I think just having a few is good. So mm -hmm. if you're getting beat by somebody with a certain color or a certain size. You can right. always whip one up with the jig heads you have and some screws. That's right. Right. That's right. And then, uh, and then as a co angler or uh, as somebody fishers from the bank, right? It's just a way to you to like give you ultimate flexibility without carrying 400 pounds of tackle on your back. Sure. I agree. That's cool. Cool concept, man. Absolutely. Are we ready for another bait hack? Are you through with the mystery tackle off. box? Oh, I didn't here. know. I didn't know if you had anything else in there. We've got, uh, but Grande wait, there's more. Four inch kickback shad, super shad 4K. Oh, swim bait. Well, so grounded bass. There's a lot of people. I, I have not used a ton of there, but there are definitely people that are fans of like the big. There are a lot of fans of grounded. Yeah. So this That's is there. It very much oh, looks yeah. like every other the, swimmer. The thing. Uh huh. I, I was kind of hoping that it would be a little more like they would have done something a little more original with their, you know, I mean, because I would say that grounded bass, right? They're. I guess they them and hags are pretty baits. similar, but like for the most yeah, part, their baits are a little unique. So I kind of thought yep. maybe this would be a little more aggressively ribbed, or mm -hmm. but this looks just like the the K Tech, the the sexy mm -hmm. swimmer, the the other right. twenty that are out there. But that's I mean, right. I'm sure to, sure it'll catch them. Yep, decent enough looking color. It doesn't have clamshells, which I'm a fan of. There you go. So that's the box. You got some shads. You got some of these. You got a, a jig, some hooks, a couple hard baits. I would say 50-50 for me on this box. Right uh, on. 50%. I might give it a try. 50% I would donate to my uh, some youth high school fishing kids. That's what I'm uh, about to do with mine. And then we're going to give that away here in a little bit. So uh, nice. while Eric is getting a bait hack up, I'll uh, set up a, a giveaway for that mystery tackle box. So I use... Which yes, Neil. I don't, they're not exactly the same as Z-Man, but they are definitely uh, an elastic type material for those 10,000 fish baits. Right. 
Right. So I use a baiting needle. It's from Eagle Claw. I got it on clearance. Got uh, two needles for a buck ninety-seven. They last forever. Sure. And so what you could do is you can skirt and throw old skirt material through any plastic. So I'll take a couple of strands. This won't be a great color for it. I wouldn't pick this color for it, but I just got it sitting here. So I'm just going to do it to show you because it'll show up nicely in contrast. So the needle, if you can see that, can you see that, Hella? Mm -hmm. It's got a little hole in it. Yep. So I'm going to stick stick the uh, material in that little hole, and I'm just going to pull it through. Let's see what it looks like. I kind of remove the needle and then start pulling it through. You have a skirted Senko. I don't know. Would you throw it? I think it might. I think it might. Give I mean, a there was a whole sauce. company that look, for a while look at that. all kinds of that stuff, right? I mean, that looks pretty cool, man. But you could I mean, also do it with fur and feather. I mean, right? You could do anything. You could do Rabbit crystal baits. flash. You, you could do crystal flash with it, right? I mean, does Rabbit Bates have a Senko? I don't know. I don't know. Don't think. I don't think so. I think I they, they do. They actually, when it comes out the tail, like yeah. straight. Well, it's kind of like a trick worm. Yeah, but but not skirting material. You could do feather. You could do crystal flash. You could do anything. But Which, I think that's cool. That would give you some of the effect that your shaky head gives mm -hmm. with yeah, a lot right. less effort and fly tying and right. Like you could get some of the absolutely some of that effect. That's exactly right. Yep. Yep. There you go, man. I think it's pretty cool. And you could yeah, shorten if you want it. You could shorten it up really, so it's almost like little uh, you little can cat, make it, like yeah, right, like little whisk, tiny little gill whiskers, right? Let's do let's do that right now. See what it looks like. Yeah, you could do anything. That's the cool part about. There you go. Yeah, just a little accent. Pretty cool. Get yourself a baiting needle. Have a lot of fun with it during the winter mm -hmm. when you get bored. Stick All a right. bunch of shit in your lures. So I'm actually going to give credit to um, Matt Stefan on this one. Is where I saw it. Oh, nice. Um, so hollow belly swim baits, bass yeah. tricks, power bait. Hell, yep. they catch fish, right? Very um, good. Mostly they have these beautiful heads on them. Yep. Eyeballs, all that stuff, and then you end up usually sticking a jig head right through the end of it. Yep. Well, they're actually set up pretty good to have internal. Right, so you can take. I like to use this agitator head that I have, but you basically the same concept on how you rig a stupid tube. Yeah, right? you can put a little slit in the bottom of the belly and you run the hook through. Right, you come yep. out, you feed the hook out the top, and then you can work that head back into place. Yep. Internal head weight. Now you got a nice, yep. clean, kind of a stupid tube, weedless jig head with a very collapsible swim bait yep so you can use a tube head you can use a shaky head you can use a variety of hooks different weights and then you're get like the other knock on hollow bellies is they rip really easy yeah you super glue them you can do whatever you want to get them on a hook but they they don't last long with this yeah. internal you're going to get a lot more fish out of a hollow belly very cool now i'm going to throw this in the mtb box what i like it so you're gonna this and this this is not just any bass trick. This is like 20 year old perch OG bass tricks. Like that's like the real bass tricks, man. And then uh, we're gonna give this away quick while Eric does the next bass hack. <laughs> um. So you can just do hashtag hacks. Yeah. In the comments, let them fly, and uh, Eric's gonna give us another tip. Wow. All right, man. I went a little crazy on this one, man. Uh oh. So, we've all heard about putting rattles in frogs, right? That was the screenshot for this. Are, we, are we starting the frogs now? I think we have to go frogs. Okay. How many we got right now? I, I mean, I think we're, 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 we got to be like we're already over. Hit the fifty number. I don't know. I uh, think we uh, did. I think John, let us know where we're at official count. But so we've all heard about putting rattles in your frog, right? And we've all heard about changing the skirting material on your frog, right? Mm -hmm. I did something that I don't know if I've seen it. I love feathered 
trailers on poppers because of the mm-hmm. action when it's sitting still in the water. So what I did was I took a jig rattle and I tied feathers to it. And now I have a feathered rattling frog trailer. Hella. I've not Walk seen that it. Sucker. Come on, man. <laughs> you have not seen that, bro. No way. I have seen. You've never guess, seen that. Similar, but not all of that in a package. No, I'm talking about all this in a package, man. I cut the tails off. I got. I don't even know how I got these in, but I did it. I think that's I think that's pretty badass personally. It might not last a lot of fish, but I bet they can't take a chicken feather just sitting there in the water. The action way better than skirting material, way more natural right. in my opinion. So that would be I think and then really the rattle good. along with it, like pop, pop, pop. more sparse cover. Of course. Frog. It's not a it's not a heavy cover frog. It's more yeah. open water, sparse, milfoil patches, whatever, you know, on the bank, undercut banks, not heavy cover for sure. I wouldn't want this thing getting sucked down in a hydrilla patch. I but did. Anyway, I have seen from Brian Thrift where he did use those. So he replaced the skirts with those rattles. So he's a big. Yep. Brian Thrift firmly believes he never wants to put anything inside the frog. Yep. That in some freak instance could get wedged between the hook and. That's right. And cost you a the fish. For a hookup. So I have seen him right. use right. that, but not adding material to it. And then. Right. Right. I think we've all seen the glass rattle, but I, I use a lot of BBs because they're really, really cheap. Mm-hmm. Daisy, it's my Red Rider frog, yep. and I got to give Jason Christie credit for that because on the Potomac, on my river, he smashed them in really super matted milfoil. So the BBs are less for sound, more for weight. Certainly, you could put a tungsten sinker in there, and I think one of the guys in a recent tournament did that. But that's really big, and if that gets stuck the wrong way, that's going to really stop the collapsibility of it. But Christie was throwing like, and this sounds crazy because your frog will sink like a rock. Mm-hmm. Like t- up to 12 to 14 BBs in the frog. What that does is it does two things. Sure, it's creating sound, but it's weighting it down to give an impression in the mat. So if you're mat absolutely. fishing, not yep. open water fishing. So anyway, there you go. Yep, absolutely. Daisy, um, Daisy Red Rider BBs, man. Yeah, I, I do something similar. I, and I'm running low on these, but similar concept yep. is I have a bunch of these little tiny. I don't know. I might be so few of these in here. Find them. But uh I just have these little steel dowels, similar thing, that I slide into the frogs. Mm-hmm. There's so few of them left. I don't know. I might have to. I, I, I just found a bag of them somewhere, and I just threw them in my frog box and use them forever. But they may have become so sparse that they may not be in here anymore. I'm looking for them. I don't see them. Maybe they're all inside of frogs where they belong. But it was just a little steel. Right, same thing. It's just. It's small. They bang around off each other. Hmm. I don't know where they are. I might have used them up. I don't see them. All right. Good story, Rich. That was, uh, good, uh, <laughs> I might have to get some of those steel BBs because uh, I don't know if I have yeah. any of these left. I got gotcha. you. Um, so, uh, Dalton, break. Welcome to Team Ice. Hella. You are now... One of us, one of us. Welcome to the team. Um, I forgot to turn that off. All right. Let's see here. Uh, nice. All right. So, right. I guess just while we're on frogs, right? Yeah. Typically don't like to throw frogs that look like this with nine inches of skirt material hanging out. Yep. I feel like that gives the bass oh, too yeah. many choices on where to hit, right? Yep. Like, yep. When I fish a frog... That one's chewed off, but like, <laughs> right? Uh, this is a mess, right? They're typically going to be much more like that by the time I turn yep. them up. Yep. Which, which one is that one? Man. I'm trying to think about it, man. I can't. I, uh, no longer show made. The, show the bottom of it. Man, I want it. It's not a Nori's. Hmm. No. Now you got me on it, man. You stumped me on my frog game. Dis- disappointed. Oh. I know. It's just because all the paint's chewed off, bro. That's still there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I guess you can kind of... There is a name on there. I guess it probably can't... It's molded in there. You probably can't see it, though. I honestly can't see it. No, no it's, it won't focus on it. Somebody yeah. in the chat. Come on. I know. You guys know. 
It's not a swamp donkey. It's it's not a swamp not a, do- this this is a swamp. It's not a Bobby's because they still make it. Yeah, I mean, I've played the swamp donkey oh, for years. That's not man. the stock skirts, is it? No, no way. No. The stock skirt is like super, 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 super thin cut, super, super nice. I put a nice little not, it, round it rubber black and blue skirt. Yeah, that look one. at that, man. It doesn't oh, look got, like a Jack the... Iobi. I threw the Iobi. Is it didn't look like one to me? Was it an Iobi? No, nope. I didn't think so. Uh, true tungsten. Somebody said hella cash frog. That's a fact. It's the true tungsten Mad Max frog. I never bought one. I That's honestly didn't even know they made one. It's got tungsten when, beads in it. When did they make it? Back when true tungsten was a company. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I remember that. But like, what year it was like? What other frogs were really back when Denny pro? Brower was on the pro staff and Mike Ike and they had probably one of the most stacked pro staffs in the history of pro staffs. You know who? You know who made the company? I mean, it was eventually Picasso two dentists, took over was left. Two dentists from New Jersey or something. Hmm. Swear. I heard the story directly from Mike Iconelli. So studio. there's the thing is they had a Gen 1 frog. Yep. It was hard as a rock. Like <laughs> That's this soft. one, these, these ones are nice and soft. Like, yeah. Um, they had the rattle attached to the shaft and it was like taped on there. Oh. <laughs> So it was like a Not tungsten good. worm rattle that was like taped on there. Taped onto the shell. So like it was hard as rock. You couldn't hook nothing. So yeah. they started out really poorly. But they're Gen 2s. Good. Good frog. If you can find them on eBay cheap, I'd get them. But they don't usually okay. go cheap. Yeah. So the dentist, how they got the ability to be first mover into the tungsten market, they use tungsten for dental purposes for mm-hmm. uh, dental appliances and such. And that's how they came to man because they love the fish as well. And they figured out how to manufacture, I guess, the first um, tungsten weights. That's the story behind true tungsten. The rest, I won't tell how they went out of yeah. business, but but you they can imagine they I were making they overextended stole... their marketing budget a little too much and yeah. negatory. Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> you might be right there too. Definitely could have been a factor. I think you're spot on. But let's just say the money was going someplace else. Yeah. Hmm. That, we'll just call it maybe less than optimal best business practices. Yes. 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 This, one, this one's got a whole bunch of those steel rods in it. I was using this in the mats on the cross. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Tungsten powdered weighted frogs in the body material hmm. on the belly. So, well, I guess one thing, right? Super uh, soft top. Would that help? Hard know. bottom, like, super soft. Wasn't that the hard belly though from Bariski? Sure. So, like yep. most standard hooks, right? They lay really flat. Mm-hmm. Yep. Typically, uh, right? Right. I will angle, take man. the pliers at times and tweak the angle mm-hmm. of that out a little bit, so it's just. You know, a couple degrees separated from the body to get better yeah. hookups. Yep. Yep. Um, That's why I like the uh, more of a mat thing. I don't know what else yep, they have for. for sure. That's why I like the, um, you know, reaction innovations, man. That's what I'm talking, man. Those hook points tipped up. Badass, man. That was a custom hook they made. Check. I mean, look at the hook angle on that thing. I need to find a replacement weight for this. Weight one. for that. Yeah. I don't Very think I can just like steal it out of a booyah and shove it in there or something. Like just buy booyah frogs <laughs> just to steal the weight out of them, and then <laughs> would it work? I don't know. I don't know either, man. Need to work That's on that. Crazy. Yep. Maybe in a future show we'll figure out how to replace the uh, the belly weight on missing uh, swamp donkeys. Absolutely, man. A tackle craft says they'll send you one. TK, what's up? Well, if you're gonna send one, send a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Bass Fanatic. Yes, I do have Method Cranks from Reaction Innovations. And they are for sale. I will sell you all four of them. I just put them right over there the other day. So just slide into the Instagram DMs and 
Yep, slide him in. I'll show you the colors because you know you can't turn down somebody who's so, over a crank. Eric, have you thrown these for and do they run? Can't say a word about them, man. If you know, you know. They're well, brand new. I haven't thrown them, so I wouldn't know. But there is, the knocks, there, 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 is a, there is info on this crankbait out there, guys. If you know crankbaits, you know what I'm about to say. Yeah. It was a very innovative concept. I didn't really understand the bait. PK Stanley educated me. Um, but if you want it for a collectible, not to fish, these are fine specimens because they have never seen the water. Brand freaking spanking new. And they're cool. I mean, look at that. TK, sound off. What do you think about that? I mean, what I heard and what I've seen personally, uh -huh. I have a handful of them, Yeah, is that some of them run really well and catch a lot sure. of bass. Sure. Other ones can't swim for shit. <laughs> yep. So I don't know. Maybe I should go up to the lake before I sell them. Or it's just a mystery pot. You got to take a chance. Yeah. Never throw them. <laughs> we still doing hacks? Yeah. I think we're in the 70s, somebody said. Um, 70s? Yeah, if you mold them, we, I'll help you market them uh, if you pour a bunch of uh, swamp donkey weights. Um, he says one out of six. I was a little uh, little luckier than that. I would say 75% of mine ran. So maybe I got okay. a good, good, good bunch of them. You, you got the oh, good batch. Probably, like yeah, check in on this. Uh, looks like 70 people. Are in for the MTB box with the extra swim bait. Oh, so wow, last nice. call here. Tackle craft's not talking. Uh, <laughs> he is. He's he ain't saying a word. He knows. I know. I don't really trim the legs different. I cut them pretty straight. I don't really think that affects walking. Yeah. Maybe it's in our mind. I don't know. I do have a flu cack, but I really don't have the stuff on how to show it. You can't give look 70. We've overachieved tonight. I think you reserve it for you know bait hacks too. I know this might go members only at some point. This replay may not be up here forever. That's true. All right, let's get one more. Almost to 75. All right. All right, we're out. It's time to give this bad boy away. What do you got? Give it I'm away. Given, somebody's gonna win the MTB box tonight. And then uh, nice. I, I have another MTB box that I'll give away on a members only stream in the near future. Hook for light, hook life, formerly known as White Whale. I'll get your address on Instagram. Send me a note. So, Very congratulations. Cool. You got some baits. All right. Oh, yeah. There's one of my rusty rivets on an out of production mega bass. Ooh, Don't even tell that. me Picasso was first, bro. That thing. And look at that sexy ass little tail I tied on the end of that buzz bait. That's hot, dude. Splayed perfectly, I might add. That's an old buzz bait, man. Double buzz. So somebody, I think, asked. Ooh. Let's see, there's a question here. Yeah. What do you got? So, did we yeah, fill we're... our in the chat? Did we fill our quota, yes or no, on 50 plus hacks? Let us know. Um, There was a question here. What is the best swimmer you ever thrown in your opinion? So I assume we're talking swimmer. We're talking like a Kai Tech swimmer kind of thing. Like that, right? Yeah. What's what's your favorite swimmer? Man, I mean, you know, it's a boring answer, right? Oh, well. Okay, I'm just going to break it down this way then. Finesse swimmer are we talking? Are we talking like just standard size, you know, in the four inch to five inch category? Are we talking super size? Because there are different answers. I would say let's just talk 3.3 to 4.2s or 4.5s, somewhere in there. Three to four inch mm. swimmers. All right, I'll give you three, three inches. Going to be the uh, it's going to be on an Okashira screw head that I paint with a little nail polish um, in an eighth ounce, and it's going to be the Spark Shad. Okay, without a doubt, it's put money in my pocket when you need a bite and it's tough as balls on eight pound test, seven and a half foot spinner rod, gray to floral. That's that's it for me, without a doubt. I would say for me, it's probably the Fat Impact 3.8, 3.3 K-Tech. I mean, um, if I was going mid-size, I just had to say finesse because I wanted to. Sure. <laughs>
But what about the big one? G. Loomis really, Gators. I mean, I probably, like, if I'm going to go bigger, I'm probably going to go with a hollow belly, like a Bass Tricks or something like that or something yeah. different. Right on. Um, Makes sense. I will say that Omnia does have 25% off K-Tech. Oh, nice. The week. I'll drop a link down uh, right here. If anybody wants to grab those. No code needed. You can just get 25% off on a pretty badass fish catch and swim bait. Uh, That's pretty good stuff right there, bro. 25% yeah. off. That's not that's not shabby. And it's like, you know, February. They didn't have yeah. to give you anything. K Tech for tournaments. And then you can use uh sexy swimmers and these grande bass ones and all those for practice. <laughs> right on. <laughs> all right. There's the unofficial count of 75. So I'm gonna save the few that are on my list here for next time, and we'll just kind of hang out and just chat. How's that sound for a little bit? There you go. Perfect. Unless you unless you gotta go. Nope. Eric. Right. No man, so, what, are there any are there any questions? Yeah, let's uh of the hacks or yeah, let me I uh mean, dig I saw a bunch the, of questions. Uh, I'm gonna pin that K Tech link in case anybody wants to take advantage of it. Very nice. All right. Uh Will wants to know where's your first derby with the Captain Scooter? Man, right we're going we're going to Car Lake. Hmm. Yep. Where it's where the Bassmaster Opens are going this year. Yeah, they are, aren't they, man? I know. I'm. I, I wish uh, my man could fish it, man, but he's got conflicts with sponsor obligations. Because I would, I'd bet on Scooter. That's a right. fact. Yeah, he's a, he's a stud there for sure. Was that when's the first one? Uh yep. I said when. Yep. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. March. March. Not too March. far. Yeah, I know, man. Five six weeks and you're back in Derby action. There it is, man. That's the that's the that's the that's the big trophy for the for the two day. So if Let anybody wants check. to know if any of these bait hacks work, hold on. <laughs> Hell yeah, they do. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I want to show it on stream, man. What? There it is, man. Thirty grand plus big fish, so it was like 32, 32 and change. There you go. There you go, man. Biggest check in a team tournament of my life. Very cool. Yeah, are you kidding me? Pretty happy. Pretty proud of that, man. It was great team effort, too, man. I see great uh, team effort. Peter coming in with a $5 super chat. Thank you for tuning in and, and participating. Much appreciated. Oh, absolutely. Nice, man. Dax Marshall was a DB3. Baby bass with per belly? Yeah, Dax Marshall. I got that bait. How many are you looking for? <laughs> Hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> JP he Arrow. He's looking for uh yeah. what'd he uh, say? Uh, Bagley's he, Bagley's DB3 or KB2 and baby bass with the pearl belly for sure. TK Stanley's got a few of mine that he hadn't painted. TK, don't paint those yet. <laughs> they got the uh, good ones too. Brandon, the ones that we don't oh have. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please, no. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple of squirrels for show. What's the hack to actually go fishing and try some of this stuff? <laughs> That's a comment of the night. TK wants to know what's the hack to actually go fishing and try some of it. We need a hack for that, especially in the winter. In I got the winter, you, TK, man. I feel you, bro. Well, the, the, the thing is, is, uh, uh, yeah, when you when you got to paint baits to pay the bills, that takes time. Um, mm -hmm. So there's advantages, right? Uh, you know, if you're if you're in business for yourself, you have the freedom mm -hmm. to make your own choices. But you're, you know, anytime you take a day off, right? You're <laughs> you're the one taking the day off, right? Like, right? There's nobody, and I guess, and the flip side, right? If you uh, if you're uh, you're uh, working for the man, yeah, you get two weeks, three weeks, four weeks off. Mm -hmm. but then you're limited so it's there's yeah. a give and take for all that stuff guys don't try to talk tackle craft out of pain baits man we would what would we who would we listen to during the day it come right? down to time management yeah that's true well there's uh, that too i guess Hats you get, off to yeah the, in a couple more years you train bean how to paint baits and you go fishing <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> yep 
No, Very how you true. do it, T Kate, is you get your uh your uh what is it called? Your your premium set up, right? Your, what is it? He wants to do the uh what's the one Travis started with? The pay site oh. from oh 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 uh, Patreon. Patreon. You get your Patreon yep. set up. That's right. And then you can start having a passive income. And then you're one step closer to going fishing more. Yeah. There you go. I mean, I think people would tune in, man. Uh, Alex, any ringed EWG hook hacks? Um, the EWG ringed hook is the hack. Mm. Have you ever played around with the ringed EWGs? You know what um, they are. You're aware of ring. them? Oh, yeah, yeah. The VMC makes one. Yeah. Gamagatsu does too. I know yeah, I love them. Gamagatsu stab. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How much time I'm flipping? Do you like half it? Half ounce or less, three quarter ounce or less. I'm having a ring DWG. Wood, grass, doesn't matter. Seems to get more bites and hooks them up better. Mm. Uh, let's see. Very let's interesting. Oh, you know what? I want to give one more hack away. This is a money saving oh. hack. And it's a really good one. So while you're doing that, Benedetta wants to know what's your preferred fishing line, Eric. Good night. I'm all over the place. Probably Seaguar, the fluorocarbon, um, the uh, what you call it, the Invisex. Yep. I suffix love, mono. I, I love suffix mono, the precision wound for cranking or big game. That's probably the three right now that have my attention. And for braid, I mean, it really at the end of the day, man, I can't be power pro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yes, I use line conditioner. I don't know if it works, but it's just maybe in my head. Mm -hmm. So if you if you want the perfect nail weight, in my opinion, that's all purpose, and you want to add a little flash and color for your nail weight so you don't want to spend six bucks on lead and input lead in the water, because I don't think there's any lead in here. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. This is called a carpet drive screw nail. Ever heard of it? If you're a carpet guy, you lay carpet. When you're putting it in the, the, the tack strip, you know, like when you're finishing the carpet in a transition, this is what they drive into that metal strip. And it's sure. it's it's uh, spiral shanked mm -hmm. right there, right there. And they come in gold and silver. I think they make it in like copper, um, lots of different colors. But uh, I like it just adds a hint of flash, holds pretty well. And it's light enough um, that it doesn't really, you know, affect the weight too much, but it definitely gets it down quicker for you. And uh, final 15 minutes of fishing in our Bojangles Championship Tournament. Scooter is, oddly enough, uh, we're moving through a dock system where I'd caught a forward and change on a topwater the day before. It's midday. Fish are under the dock. He's skipping a Senko around. He goes, turns to me, man. He goes, the Senko's taking too long to get down. You got anything for it? I had some of these in my pocket. I'm about to show one more thing that's really, really cool. Um, I pulled this out, which is my little speed pocket thing with one of my little tug life stickers. <laughs> and I put, I literally swung the Senko back. I popped the back side of this open. So this, I keep this in my pocket where I keep my drop shot weights or my yep. wacky weights. Popped it in to the Senko. Next pitch, five plus. That was the winning fish. I mean, all the fish we had to catch to win, but that sealed the deal. There you go. And this nice. is the front side of that little package. Little foam, and that's sexy. So if you're nedding and you know you're going to lose some, or you're drop shot, and these are the drop shot hooks. So that's my little drop speed pack. Weights in the back, heads in the front, and hooks in the front. In my pocket. That, I don't have to is, dig in my tackle bag. So is that something you – you where does that come from? I make little, them. You make them? I know, I know people will recognize this. Is it on the Bass Lab cartel site? I, nope, no, 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 no. I'm about to do some, I think. I think. Would okay. anybody be interested in that? Would you use that, Hella? Uh, yeah. I mean, I could see that. I, I mean. Okay. I don't like it. would be handy, especially dig, like, when you're fishing as a co. I mean, or in just even situations, like even if you're a boater, like yeah. if you know you're on a a Nico bite, you're always going to use Nico weights, right? They're going to fly out. Like, there's there's, there's no you question, handy, man. Though. I mean, there's, That's I mean, it's exactly just like. Right. Right, I'm on a super hot drop shot bite or a flipping bite. Like if I'm on a, you know, I'm just holding up this bag worms, but whatever. Like, yeah. if my, right, this right. is going to be in my pouch or in my pocket. Like yes. I'm not going to go into the compartment every time I need one. So I, I literally hate as a co angler. I lose something. I have to bend over the seat, open the back compartment, especially if it's raining. I don't want my tackle getting soaked. Dig in my bag. Go grab a weight, a sinker, a head, 
It's annoying. I hate it. This is my little solution for that. So nice. I don't know. I think it's a really cool concept, man. And it's reusing something that I do that I'm not going to tell you about because I don't want to say it on the stream. But I know people will recognize this if you do what I do. Yeah, there you go, Tyler. Exactly. That's what it pouch, is. Pouches. That's right. That's right. So let's keep that cool in case people are watching. <laughs> But you know, I mean, it is what it is, right? So you it's make just one something that Copenhagen tin, if you needed to, you honestly could, man. That's just a that's just a bait hack for everybody, guys. Yeah. But you wouldn't want to like pinch your thing into the Copenhagen thing and put a bunch of net heads in your pouch. You know, yeah. uh, you might do that in a in a hurry. Anyway, I just thought that was cool. That's the yeah. kind of stuff. So that's a money saving hack. You make your own, or if you want a really cool sticker on it, call me. I'll make you a few. I don't know, or maybe I'll give you one if you order something from the Bass Lab. There you go. You just yeah, say you saw you it. Gotta put, or put an you, order, say you saw the Bass Hack stream, <laughs> wink, wink, and then. Uh... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, give me one of them speed packs. That's what I call it. Speed packs, man. It's a speed pack. Be careful, though. Like, don't don't say you're carrying your speed pack through the airport or anything like that. You might get in trouble. That's your, that's your quick pack. I don't know. Somebody come up with a better name. That sucks. Uh, I have not checked out the Rocco. I haven't even looked. I haven't even seen one in person yet. Haven't checked out the Rocco. I did not like the flat side. Lazy. Like the OG couldn't feel thing. it. Nope. Nope. Couldn't feel it. Couldn't feel the bait. Didn't know what it was doing. I'm like, I need to feel the bait. <laughs> Same thing with like the DT8. So if anybody wants to buy some DTH cheap, I got them. I don't want to fish it. I'm not saying it doesn't catch them. I just can't feel it. <laughs> it's like when you fish the DT6 or DT4 or DT10, you could feel the bait. You know, a flat side that I'm throwing. I can feel that bait. Now, maybe that's exactly why it works because it's lazy. I don't know. You guys tell me. Does it work for you guys? Um, you know what I mean? I haven't I, I didn't throw the DTA a lot, but I can't say that it was like a right. Yeah. It wasn't didn't 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 hit hard out of the package the little bit I threw it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wanted, you know, I looked at the bill angle and I'm like, it comes straight out of the bait. You know, maybe it's more like a, I don't know, DB, but the DB I could feel. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what they're going for. I really don't. I just envision the thump of a DT6, but get get me to eight feet. Maybe it can't be done. Marty Burns will have something to say about that. Because, I mean, do you throw a DT6? Great bait. For production, it's a fish catching freaking machine. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. No, it's a little rat. I mean, my uh... God. Affordable. Good colors. Yeah, I would, that's probably the, I probably caught more. I mean, I'm not a huge crankbait guy like Travis. You know, I don't have the roots in crankbaiting that Travis does. <laughs> um, but <laughs> DT6, I probably caught more bass on a DT6 than any other crankbait I've yeah. combined, probably. I mean, I can't argue with it. And I love custom baits, man. It's a hell of a bait. And so to me, it's like, man, you just want that DT6 to get to that eight to 10 foot range and they come out with it. I'm not trying to slam it. Maybe mm -hmm. I haven't spent enough time, but if I can't feel a crankbait, I don't want to fish it. That's just me. I'm used to feeling the vibration, whether it's tight, wide, hard, thump, whatever. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I didn't give it a, a fair shake. Custom balsa favorite. So I guess that's Impo the best. Impossible question for me. It's just impossible. It'd be like, I don't know. I don't even know how to make an analogy on that one. Yeah. I guess There's so many categories. Like, what like, season, what water depth, blah, blah, blah. I probably yeah. would, but there's, but you know, I've collected balsa. Like, okay, so custom so long. balsa. What's the first one that pops in your mind? <laughs> All of them that I'm looking at right here within my eyeball shot. <laughs> you cannot, there's just no way to ask the question to make it's me supposed answer. supposed to be like, I say grapes, you say. <laughs> Craig Bates. <laughs> the first one that comes to your mind. <laughs> cotton candy. I don't know. <laughs> there is a I actually don't. Candy I grape. don't throw a ton of them. I don't throw a ton of. I've got a couple black labels. I've got a couple old yeah. WECs. It's yeah. not something I do a ton of. Um, I mean, look, man. Everybody has their strengths, and you know, I don't know how your water's set up. I mean, you obviously do well in tournaments, so you got your jam going. You can catch them. It's just, you know, what we love to do, how we gravitate towards certain things. You know, Rick Clun had a great quote 
you know, as anglers today, we're all a combination of all the people that have come before us, whether you read it or you fish with a team partner or your dad taught you, you know, and of course you come into your own, right? But the legacy is there. And so I had a chance to fish, you know, over the years when I was learning the river, Hella, you know, I had, I had a boat, um, but I had a job and, and, you know, all my buddies were fishing. I was working. So, and I had clients that wanted to go out and I didn't feel like I knew the Potomac well enough. Didn't want to crash my boat. Um, didn't know how to approach the river. So I hired some guides and, you know, it was, it was, I was really fortunate to fish with them. They all had different approaches, you know, from Glenn Peacock to Steve Chaconis to Richard Waiter to Billy Kramer, who's probably one of the OG river rats on the Potomac. Absolute power hammer. Never had a spinning rod in his boat. Didn't crank a whole lot. Threw a minus one for sure. Maybe a square bill, but he was doing other power stuff on that river. So I've seen mm-hmm. it all. And, you know, that's why I'm a junk fisherman. I do like finesse fishing. I absolutely love a spinning rod. Caught a lot of good fishing tournaments on it. Won me some money. Um, but I also love power fishing too, man. So I'm 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 just a I'm a junk guy. Awesome. I can't say I, yeah. So it's it's really hard to say like my favorite balls. So. I got some Marty Burns baits that I absolutely love. I mean, you know, the last tournament of the year that I won with uh, Rich uh, Rich Ledbeater from Risby Fishing from the Bass University, we we, we sacked the largest sack of the year, twenty four eighty one, on the Upper Bay, and one of Marty's baits played a played a role in it. It, it wasn't this red one, but it's the, this is the build, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I wanted a thicker uh, bodied. Uh, flat side, hard thumping, but tight. And this is a bait that I can feel. Um, Marty tends to use a denser balsa, if you will. Uh, he doesn't like the softer balsa, so they're really super durable the way he fishes. TK paint, paint job, by the way. And um, yeah, you man, the fish responded. Um, a- a- absolutely. Right. So yeah. I yep, feel like yep. it looks like a, it, it rind, the shape of it reminds me of a bling. Yeah, right, right. Great story of the bling. So, um, Marty Burns uh, was making crankbaits for a California uh, bass angler. Word has it on the street. I cannot confirm this rumor, um, but uh, Marty has a very, uh, the origins of Marty Marty's baits, uh, and he carved for this guy, and uh, word has it that bait was sent to Japan, and they made a few little cuts here and there, and hmm. that's that's the origin of the bling. And then true, not plastic. true. I don't know exactly. So, yeah, bling on that jackal. Now I got a balsa one. That's better. That's mo better, in my opinion, because you you can't beat wood. Plastic versus wood just can't be beat. You got well. We talked about it on Instagram. If you're a subscriber and you got notifications on, you'd see these things. So yeah, I feel like we spread the word. I think we did, man. Yeah, the replay will be up. Jay Henning. Right on. There's right on. <laughs> I know I say this a lot, but there was definitely juice spilled all over the table earlier. So you might <laughs> want to go back and wipe some of it up. Yep. 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 Yeah, man. I mean, you know, in the bait building world, man, who knows who originated what, right? I mean, you know the original originals, but a lot of baits today have inspiration from antiques. It's crazy, right? It's really hard to do something new, you know? So everybody's got their spin, lip angle matters, you know, how, how baits are made, how durable is your balsa. I will say this about Marty Spates. I don't know there's a more durable balsa bait out there. And, um, you know, TK, who's on the stream tonight, um, Marty builds the most for him. I, I do limited, limited drops of like the Epic Shad because I wanted a very big bodied, you know, balsa crank bait. Oh, let me go get one because I want to show that. Yeah, they're sold out. So it's not like I'm trying to all get <laughs> they, they gone. And they'd be uh, gone fast, and they'll be gone for a while. Yeah, there's a, oh, hella. definitely yeah. don't want to pre silk baits or anything in bait fuel. Usually, time and bait fuel, from what I've heard, don't go hand in hand. You can uh, check with Brian Kasterzak in the comments. I would say uh, bait fuel a little bit goes a long ways if you think it works, and maybe just before the tournament or apply as you go because I've heard bad things about soaking in bait fuel 
Um, so, so, so this is this is the Marty bait for me. It's called the Epic Shad and Blueback Herring PK. It is a foil bait for Marty, but I want to like, just for comparison size. So, little 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 blingish body. This is a big body bait, super crazy high float. But um, you know, pre spawn fish are looking for a big meal, right? That's why you, that's why you slow roll around a big spinner bait with a trailer on it, moving a lot of water. You know, in my in my waters are eating. They're eating white perch, they're eating gizzard shad. They are really trying to bone up those pre-spall fem females. So I always wanted a bait that I could, you know, roll around and I could feel it. I can drag it, you know, worm it through cover, rip wrap. Because when those fish move up in that three to five foot range, I want to give them something big. So, and this cast nice, I could really feel it. And it's got this nice custom ticker that's old school in it. So anyway, I wanted to show How deep one. Was the epic shad run? Three to five, depending upon what type of uh, line you're using. So, Pretty standard square bill type. That's right. That's right. But a tight, 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 tight dive. I wanted to show a. Uh, I showed this the on the on the stream the other night. So if you watch it, don't cheat. If you remember, I was there. Do you do do you know you were you were watching? I did not. So know you know what the name was. of this. I already forgot what it was to be honest. <laughs> Can anybody name that? So it, this fascinates me. This bait fascinates me. Because every rattling bait out there, right, lipless vibration bait, um, except for the pogo shad, is tight. This is a very wide wobbling. You don't see it much in lipless, right? Um, this is probably the widest other than the pogo shad, but it's big. So here's a pogo, and there's that thing. It's got a big body, and it's got a bulbous belly on it. So it's like a pot belly. Mm -hmm. And so that creates some of that displacement. That displaces a lot of water. Who knows this bait? Does anybody know it? Anybody know it? I've had some crazy good days on the on my rivers. Mm -hmm. Same kind of concept, right? Big body, big body, big big meal. So you know, to me, if you're throwing a quarter ounce trap, is it true? Does the bigger trap in the spring? But the challenge is with the bigger trap. A three quarter ounce. If you throw it in shallow, you know you're going to be too digging down too much, right? This is, I think, I, I, I think it's. Let me see if it has a weight on it. Oh, this is the floating one. What? Floating? Floating? You say? Anyway, it's the tri shad. If anybody can find them, let me know. I'd love to be. I'd love the to be getting something. <clears throat> made, made in the old USA by J A Lures. J and this is a floater. So floater for me and my grass, seems like it'd be tricky it? to get it started. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It's not. It doesn't exactly float. It's more like a suspender. So okay. Anyway, and it casts because it's got some got some size. Anyway, just want to just want to show an oddity on the stream that maybe nobody saw before. Well. Epic Shad is one of the ones you do sell on your site occasionally, right? Yeah, when 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 he has time to carve. So he only carves a handful a year for me. So yep. Yep. And they go they go real fast. Mm -hmm. So got definitely gotta be on the <clears throat> IG notification train if you think you're gonna get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't I you know, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, that'd be cool, Colby. If a bunch of people wanted to send messages in. Their favorite hacks? We could do a whole show just on viewer hacks. Good night. That'd be friend amazing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I've you found never, the uh, tri shed. I've That's awesome, Brown Baco. Let's see. Never broken the bill off a of DT6. Crazy. A lot of people say they have. I don't know if that's just, you <laughs> so know, sometimes here's, here's you, you get hack. a bad run. Here's the thing people need to learn how to clear grass from their crankbaits. Okay. Yeah. What you oh, don't want to do, right? This is not what happens. A lot of people, what they end up doing is they slap the bait <laughs> like this on, mm -hmm. and I don't care what you do, you're going to break crankbaits doing that. I mm -hmm. do, you'll see me in the videos, will whip my bait at the water to clear. But what I'm doing is just I'm, your hooks. It's, it's, yeah, it's circling. And what I'm trying to do is just catch the grass and the hooks to skim mm -hmm. the water, let the water mm -hmm. and the friction pulled away. I'm never actually slapping my bait against right. the water. It's trying to create a, an, a tangent point where the grass catches and drags in the water and rips free. That's the key. Right. Or if you can't do that, reel it up, pull the grass off and cast it and stop breaking <laughs> your bait like a moron. Hey, um, 
Marty Burns is so confident in the way he builds his. He said he'd slap away. He said slap away if you break it. He'll give you another one, but that would require TK to paint it. So I guess Marty would have to pay TK to paint another bay for the guy. And that might be tough to get in the rotation. Anyway. You're not going to get there overnight for your derby on the weekend if you break one. So critical gravy says there's two trash ads on eBay. They were eleven ninety nine. Now they're sixty five. What the fuck? No, nah, they're still eleven ninety nine. Uh, did you get your perch? Did that show up? Some Which perch? Or, didn't, uh, oh yeah, I got him. Yeah, fifteen bucks for three baits. Yep. You only got wanted him. one. I only wanted one. <laughs> I only wanted one, but now did I got it live two. up to the expectations in person. It did. It did. It was. It was perfect. There it is, OG Sun Perch, which is really different than the repaint that they brought out from uh, the paint shop. So it's okay. I mean, it's so, all good. I don't. I don't remember. I don't know if you were on Travis's or different stream, or maybe you might have been on with Bateman. Hold it up again. Oh like, yeah, sorry. Uh, you showed that bait, and you're like, yep. hard to find. Can't find this. Is it Sun yep. Perch? Is that what's called? Yes. Yep. So that old faded out bomber flat A sun perch. And I just yep. happened to be, I saw something else in one of my eBay alerts. I know. And typically, I think they must have had a Vixen for sale or something like that yep. or something else I was interested yep. in. Yep. And then typically when somebody has a good bait, I always see other items by seller and I'll scroll yeah. through. And that thing caught my yeah. eye and I was like, I don't remember it was, I sent it to you and Baxter. I was like, I know That's one right. of you was looking for this. That's right. And you jumped all over it. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was a good tip. I appreciate it. That's, That's how I got him on true. here. Then I was like, oh, by the way, do you want to come on the stream? Since I said <laughs> Tim, you're right. Yeah, there you go, man. You hooked me up with my unicorn for cheap. I mean, five bucks a bait is what I averaged because I think I had to pay shipping. I don't remember. It was it was a it was a definite deal. Tim, you are right. It's a unicorn. Yep. Oh, Brown Baker wants to sell some OG Vixens. What? He's teasing. What he's, he is teasing. That's what he's saying. Word has it that they got they got the remake right. I don't know. Did they? Um, I got one. Or I got about two of them. Do they sound the same? I thought this one's in the package. I don't know where my top water box is. I don't think it's handy. Mm -hmm. I, I I did a uh, when they first came out. I ordered them. I I shook them on stream. Definitely closer than the Gen Two. Yes. So this one, the Gen 3, is much better than the Gen 2. I don't know okay. that it's identical. The, the the hook tie angle is more like so that it, it passes the eye test. I can tell you that. Is, is the plastic as hard? I don't know. I mean, it sounds really similar. I mean, I think it's, yeah. it's a good it's going to be a good bait. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Well, there you go. I mean. Good enough, close enough, I threw right? It a little bit. I didn't have a lot of time. You know, got so many of the old ones. You don't got time to throw the new ones. You know how it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, gravy. If you want to buy some of Eric's DT8s or anybody, I know people just go uh, Epic Eric on Instagram, slide into his DMs, anything he yeah. mentioned. Oh, and uh, if you're not on Instagram, you can send me a message on on the website. Which you uh, thank you, Hella, for putting that up. It's in the it's in the description of the show. Um, I do read the email from the website. I don't camp on it, but I will get back to everybody that that inquires. So are yeah. PH baits worth it? Phil Hunt makes some good baits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, man. I think he worked with Bill Lowen on a few of his his designs. Um, you know, and Bill's uh, Ohio River River Rat. And if you're designing baits to catch fish on the Ohio River, where no fish live, apparently, according to Bill Ooh, and Ohio this? River fishermen, I'll sure. Done. <laughs> I'll trade you. I'll trade you. Just keep, Jeremy says, just give him an old spook. So he would probably be up for. Oh, we got, we got a problem here. <laughs> what do you got? I don't know. I was only trying to grab one thing, but <laughs> I've been there, done that one. The old uh, the Zell Roland. Ooh, good one. Back, he's a back hook hanger, dude. But, uh, I had the same thing happen to mine. Mine cracked. Did yours crack and the hook hanger king out? It maybe. Mine has a crack in the tail. 
it's, it's fair, a baby. It maybe there is ever so slightly. I can't. And yeah. it's a baby. It could be repaired. I mean, yeah. TK Stanley's the master at repairs. Not that he will repair your old spook. Do not talk. Call him about it. Don't even ask the question. But <laughs> ten, strike the record in the last ten seconds. Yeah, he's not repairing your spook for you, but he knows how to. So maybe if you watch his stream, he lo- he streams live just about every other day or every day. Um, when, and when if Patreon you uh, comes out, maybe he'll release that. Oh, th- that's I right. My, my, here's here's my balsa collection. Oh, nice. <laughs> Pretty much the same size as Eric's. So would you say that you're a jig fisherman? Like your bladed jig, jig. What yeah, like what's jigs, your strength? Frogs. Yeah. Oh, you're, definitely okay. a jig. Like, yeah. Do you fish a lot of grass, Hella? Obviously. Yeah. Okay. So you fish a lot of rivers or more lakes? Depends on the year and what circuit yeah. I sign up for. Oh, here, yeah, here's my uh but you are there. You go, bro. But There's you're power methods. You're 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 a power guy. Yeah. Okay. Mostly, yeah. I mean, like, I'll I'll pick it up when I have to. The old wand. Do you, do, do you pick up the fairy wand? Yeah. What do you like to throw when you're fairy wanded? There's my two black labels. Yeah, those are good. <laughs> Keep it simple, man. And there, and there here's my my two. Uh, oh, good colors. Good color. I know I showed this last time we're on there, but oh god, nice. Who signed that? Kevin Short. Oh shit. 2013. Is that when he won on the uh, pick week? This one I've actually thrown. I actually I ground you on that. A little, you a got a little I, I broke it out at the natty. It didn't it didn't win me a burst of the classic, but I tried. So oh, where was that? Uh Watchtower River. Oh, the Washita River, Mount Louisiana. That that was my first aluminum boat, a Washita, hmm. that I customized with my football coach. Put some carpeted decks on it, man. Had a Chrysler, twenty-five horsepower. Headhunters lure wiggle work copy. Not nothing, nothing matches. Watch the Ben Milliken video, and then you'll know about the wiggle work. If you want a wart, buy the OG. In my opinion, all of them catch fish. They all catch fish. Pre Rapala, they all Those catch ones? fish. They all catch fish. Those ones? They really, really do. Yep. Those ones? Yeah. <laughs> You're a work guy. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't throw them. Oh my gosh. I gave one away uh, on a stream around Christmas to a member. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That was a ri- the one he held up was a original sun perch, not the repaint. He bought yeah. some of the repaints when they had the the paint shop or whatever, and he was that's not right. Pleased. That's right. It it just a different colors, man. I don't know how you match thirty year old paint faded. You know the, I mean maybe they weren't looking at an OG when they repainted it. Yeah, yeah. Justin typically a seven thirty three Dobbins, whether it's a Fury or a Sierra or whatever seven three medium action. I throw them on braid. Short mono leaders. Yep. Eric and Zona yeah. brothers. Well, he can't be Zona's brothers when he's Travis's grandpa at the same time. So. Did you hear about that on TK's? No. It was like earlier this week. Uh, yeah. TK was streaming at lunchtime and they were yeah. talking about baits or crankbaits. And he's like, yeah. somebody comes on and goes, Well, Smallmouth Crush's grandpa's got a pretty good collection. I see it behind him all the time. <laughs> That's because I don't color my hair or my beard. <laughs> He'd be looking like my grandpa. He probably just figures world. anybody that's willing to put up with Travis that long has to be related. So. <laughs> Blood. <laughs> well, I'm glad everybody got a rise out of that one. That's a first. That's a first. What's your opinion on the DT Fat 3? Um, Don't throw it because I just have so many other square bills I prefer in balls. So as a so. production square bill. Can't argue with Rapala and production balsa. This, yeah. they're, they're the best. Mass. I know produced. the question earlier. Like, what what's your best readily available balsa bait? And I would say DT six. <laughs> we we already talked about it. Yeah. DT six. I mean, for cold water shad wrap. Holy shit! Caught more. I mean, good night, right? A Doug English shrimp. <laughs> Never heard of it, but that's hysterical. <laughs> if it's a joke, I like the name. Doug English, yeah, 
<laughs> yep. Cold water, catch a fish when nothing else is biting. The old SR5 or SR6 shad wrap. Eight pound has got some Doug English stuff. I don't know. Precursor mm. to the bingos. I don't even. No, wow. Never heard of it. What's a bingo? Doug English. Teach me. CW crab crankbait. No. I had a crankbait at a package that was plastic that was a crab. Is that what he's talking about? I don't know. You did ask nope. me what I like to throw on spinning rods, right? Yeah. Um, Brown, I don't have I don't have any donk glides. Nope. Yeah, the DTs, that is a knock on them, man. They do some of them do start to sink. Hmm. Yeah. So jigworm is a mainstay for me on a spinning rod. Hell yeah. Eight three sixteen sounds jigworm. We don't do shaky head much up here. We do exposed hook jigworms. Nice, man. Um, is that the uh, outcast tackle head? No, it's a Bass Tech agitator. Okay. Like Got custom it. chartreuse. It's a little, it's actually a little football head. It's tongue. It's very cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. What's the hook? The must add. Good enough. Um, what else? Do I throw? I guess I'll throw a wacky rig around docks occasionally on a spinning rod. Oh, for sure. Occasionally a net, occasionally a drop shot. Nico. Um, oh, yeah. All good. All good, man. Any thoughts on the fluke style true tungsten? Do I have some here? I gave a pack away. I've got a bunch in a box over here. Did you? Yeah, I used to be on the the a lower level pro staff with Denny and Mike and Ike in the days back in the. Oh, very so cool. I had a bunch of that stuff. I didn't know that. Yeah. A little bit lower level, you know. I wasn't probably getting a boat right. wrap and making six figures or anything like that. But right. SR six. Oh, right there. Another good one too. Oh, look! You could see my. Uh, you could see my sign in that. Hold on, where? Ha, ha, there it is. See the neon oh, epic air sign? Look the at Bass that. Lab sign. That's pretty cool, dude. I just got that. That's nice. Well, I wish it, I wish I had room behind me for it, but I'd prefer looking at that. You know, get tired looking at some dumb LED fake neon sign. But I like it. It's got a crunk bait. A sinking uh, DT still catches them. Bo Judd, that's a fact. I told you earlier in the stream. Don't sleep on a suspending slow sink or even sinking crankbait. Do not throw your sinking DTs away. I must have, I haven't bought a DT in a long time. I must have ones that float. I don't know. You know, who, who knows, man? They get production runs. Who knows if it's changed? Who knows if the older DTs, their like quality control is like extraordinary? I, you just, you never know, right? I mean, Reaction Innovations had a really, really bad run of Swamp Donkeys. Remember that? It was so soft they would rip, hmm. and they had some that were super hard. I'm like, what the hell just happened there? Yeah, when you hate to pay, you know, be a guy that pays forty bucks for a swamp donkey to only find out you got one of the hard ones in eBay. That would suck. <laughs> that would really suck. Just you know, never know, man. Oh, the DT flats were good, man. They were good. I mean, any Rapala bait that's production, except for the ones that I mentioned that I wasn't really happy with. If I can't feel it, don't want to throw it. That's just who I am as a cranker. Not saying they don't catch them, so don't take that the wrong way. You Do you feel like a shad wrap thumps really hard? I can feel it. Okay. It's tight. I can feel it. Sure. I feel that thing working down there. It's like. So you feel like I know the it's working, just but if I. It's if I, if I, yeah, if I, if I, yeah, when I, when I actually took out the OG Slim, you know, and I'm testing Marty Bates and I'm like, I bought some OG Slims because, you know, it's cheap. I, I you know, I right. don't always want to throw Marty's Bates in practice. Right. So I'm looking at the swim and I'm going, something wrong with it. I thought I got a bad one and I had a couple with and I did it again. It's just like this lazy swim. That could be the way he wants the bait to swim. I asked Ike about it and I'm not dogging um, Rapala. Uh, and he had some of uh, Ott's original ones uh, before the productions one were in. The, the actual garage. The actual garage one. He liked them better. And, you know, that happens, right? I mean, you send the bait out for production. They don't get it quite right. So, you know, I mean, maybe there was something lost in translation. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe Ott thought the new version was an improved version. You just don't know, right? And, look, I've had people tell me, man, I catch the fire out of them and Ott. So, I mean... Hats off. I just want to I want to feel a crankbait when I throw it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I didn't see Matt Stefan's hack on the Senko, but I assume he's just throwing a straight tail on the back. Well, I mean, yes, the original 
bladed jig trailer was basically a straight tail twin tail. And I am a firm believer that day in and day out, uh, I am looking for trailers that are fairly straight with minimal action. That's my normal go-to on a bladed jig. So fair, fair enough. Yeah. Fair I enough. Mean, do you do you like a lot of action kick or do you like something streamlined like a spunk shad or a like a Zacco? I threw the eye shad yeah. before the spunk shad copied it, you know. So I was throwing an eye shad on an Imakatsu, you know, Mugula Moth chatter before there was a jackhammer as a hunt chatter bait right out of the pack. You didn't even have to trim the skirt to make it work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that thing was like all crazy. But the eye shadow was one of my favorite trailers to go to back then before there was, yeah. I mean, I'm talking years ago, you know, when you just get a regular chatterbait. So, yeah, that was my go-to, the eye shad from Jackal. I've never boiled a frog. I tend to throw them in the dash of my truck if I want them to soften up, let the sun beat them up. <laughs> Especially if you put them in, like leave them, this isn't a frog, but like they typically come in a package yeah. like this. Leave them in that yeah. package. Throw them on the dash. Dash. The let them let, let them let them bake. That'll get them. Yeah. Yep. Um. Somebody asked about my shad wraps. Do I throw bigger hooks? Yes, I've done that. Um. But as we talked about, I think bigger hooks can sometimes affect the action. Um. I I love to because a, a shad wrap. If you don't have the right rod, like a seven seven foot, you know, God, medium light action, right? With a parabolic bend, I throw it on eight. I like to throw an eight pound test straight mono. And, um, you know, the limper, the better, obviously, right? And I tend to be throwing it in cold water. And if I'm throwing a five, that's a tiny-ass bait, right? Um, I've experimented with braid to a liter, but I really do prefer just straight. Anyway, um, I like to wrap lead around the back hook. It tail weights the bait. And if I don't uh, cast too aggressively, because, you know, you get in a hurry with your, you know, then the rod's not loaded and the bait's too small, the bait will tumble. But if I get it right, man, with that lead on that bat hook, it's back weighted, so it sends the bait. And you know, um, it's it does this like a flap slap, like a flap slap from Mega Bass. It's a jerk slash crank. Yep. And um, I had an extraordinary day with Travis. Absolutely wrecked him. Uh, he didn't have any flap slacks. He's throwing like you know regular Mega Bass stuff, and they just wanted that flap slap. One of the deals is the secondary action is that bait rises head up up apparently and um same thing will happen with the shad wrap you know anyway there you go so you can throat weight the shad wrap as we've talked about upsize the hooks as we've talked about or you can wrap some lead around the tail and i've had great success catching fish with a lead wrap and i get better casting distance so i'm covering more water to hellas point be more efficient if i get more cast longer cast you know the crankbaits get into depth i'm covering more water along a break or whatever i'm doing so that's what I like. And you can play with the amount of lead. I'm no, I'm not mm -hmm. precise. I don't go out there in a bucket and go, Hey, the water's 45 degrees. You know, I just wrap some lead on it and work with it. You're not you measuring the, your lead wrap to the millimeter and Hell my, no. microns and uh, <clears throat> nope, nope. Never have never will. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not sure if it's slow rises. I mean, look, I could put it by the side of the boat, but if I've taken the time to put lead strips on it, you know, like the, the, the golf tape or the tennis racket tape that I told you about, one's thicker, one's thinner. Um, I like the thin one because I don't have to trim it. Um, but if you want more lead, you can use the thicker one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think like uh, I remember my buddy Bob Cherry's like seven suspend strips to get an SR. Was he using the seven to suspend perfectly in like 50, 45? I don't remember. He used to demonstrate on the Bass Tank and Bass Pro Shops and uh, Arundel Mills. But Bob was a great cranker, man. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he would take the time to do that. I didn't care about it. I didn't care. I just throw some lead. I know it's going to like slow it down, sink it, suspend it. I don't mind if it's slow sinking. They seem to bite it no matter what I put on. Nice. Just cover water, man. Yeah, I guess that's probably like I grew up. My dad was a, a worm dragger. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cranker. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I started palm fishing. I was a worm dragger, bro. I hardly yeah. fished any cranks. My ponds were shallow, mucky bottom. So go ahead and try to drag a crankbait. I remember the first time I did that with a crankbait that had a bill to dive in. You know, I can't remember. Probably bought it at Kmart or something like that. And I'm like, that didn't work. It came up with soup. Gross. And then I found the minus one. That was a good pawn bait. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I actually finally put those in a box. I had a little collection of OG one minus that's what i'm talking one. about but they're actually yeah. somewhere near the boat and garage now yeah i love it man 
Good stuff, man. <clears throat> man, two and a half hours. Time flies. Somebody's saying Brown Bay code, do a man's minus one on a timber tiger. What are you talking about? You got my you got my attention now. What do you what do you mean? Thank you. Thank you, Sean Lai. I, I knew you'd love that golf tape. There you go, man. What is that? The uh, brush baby? I think so. Yeah. You know, they, they they do come through wood exceptionally well. There is something <laughs> to those. Like, that actually does, like, you know, I remember, I never caught a lot on it, but I do remember taking it down to, like, yeah. Lake Fork and, like, flinging it through the timber, and they yeah. do come through wood pretty well. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, Brown Bayco. That timber tiger was great, too. TK painted some for me. I think I took... I painted a version. He painted me a version of the skunk, and I had painted one, and I took it to the pond. And literally, this this one se- hello, this one section of this pond mm-hmm. is a muck. It has been in my neighborhood forever, and it has wood everywhere, like limbs and like just it's everywhere. I bounce that little timber tag around. I also bounce one of TK square bills around. Man, I had some good days over there, man. Just ping pong it. Reeling as fast as I could through that stuff, man. I was going, pow, 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 pow. And I'd stop it. Bass come out of nowhere. Like, you would never believe how shallow they were. Blew my mind. I saw some of the bites, too. It was like, no way. Very cool, man. I love, I love, I still love pond fishing because it gives me a chance to test baits, see how they run. You catch the occasional bonus bass, but you're really seeing what what a bait can do. You know, you're looking at the action. It's, It's fun. I love it, man. Absolutely. Yep. This was good, man. This was good. I enjoyed this. Thank you, man. Yeah, this was fun. good for my my bait fanatic soul. TK says he just came up with a show concept. What what the hell is supermarket sweep? What is that? Oh you watch? I watched, yeah. I mean what is it? It was a game show. Uh I definitely remember watching it. Oh, you gotta go find some baits? Like oh like you run so through my house have, and like, look for something. Different- like there'd be different things like that would build up during the show. They have like little mini games, like most game shows. And at the end, the winning team that made it through those rounds of like trivia questions or yeah, higher yeah. lower prices or whatever, they got to do the supermarket sweep. Oh yeah, go through and grab and all they my like shit. to go like each the happen. man and the wife or the the two best friends. They'd have to, and they'd be playing like and you'd have to like they you know go for it was like you had I to get it. over a it. certain price and there was like bonus yeah. items, but they'd be like trying to throw like a bunch of ribeyes you could only get five yeah. of any one item though right so you yeah. couldn't just go and put a hundred of the most expensive things so they'd like yeah. go to the meat section get five yeah. big roasts or shoulders or whatever and then they'd you know yeah. right so he's trying to yeah. say that you know people can go in to the bass lab and with the supermarket yeah for ten thousand dollars a piece you can come into my house and grab what you want for a minute <laughs> Maybe not a supermarket. Maybe more like those little baskets you get at Walgreens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, won't be happening. Nobody's coming here. Never again. There's one person. They'll never get past it. the retinal scanners and the uh, sharks with laser beams on their freaking heads and the <laughs> moat. And hopefully, it's all sold in the next five years. Sell it everything, everybody. What? Let's go. Be gone. I'm gonna keep like one of everything. Yeah, I'm gonna unload it. Might just start like a channel, Patreon, and have people sign in to watch it and everything that I show is available for sale. Hmm. That might be the way to handle it. Venmo only. Now, there's a show concept. I could stream every night for, I think, a decade, and I'd still have shit left. I mean, that is a thing. Not necessarily in fishing, but like live shopping channels. That's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like modern day (laughs) QVC type. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think I should. I, I think, think there'd be, be a lot of people that watch it with no interest, like no intention of buying buying baits. They would just want to see. Yeah, I mean, but it's go a, for it's, and the hit because you know you would you would tell the stories and you would write and all that kind of that's, stuff. And, that's that's all I do is tell stories. I don't fish. <laughs> well, the check would suggest that you might still fish a little bit. True. True. I mean, True. I just fish with really talented people. I get a couple in the boat occasionally. Yeah, yeah, you know, a couple of good calls here and there. Catch them sometimes. Yeah, we actually had Austin on maybe a month or two ago. Dream catchers. One of the few people that have physically stepped into that room. He saw it a long time ago. It's grown but, a little bit. Yeah, but still, I mean, like, 
from what I've heard, there's not many people that have been in that room. I'd let TK in. TK could come. Marty Burns, Scooter Lily, Brian the Carpenter, but only people that could come in with respect. If I get a sniff that somebody says something disrespectful, they're out. Like when Travis filmed, here's a little backstory for y'all. Travis came to my house. He wanted to shoot it, right? And so he was in my garage. And there's one section. He started to throw my tackle boxes on the ground. Like, look at all this stuff. Like, he wanted to make it some joke show. Hmm. And I said, stop the effing camera right now. And I told him, I said, you can pack your shit up and leave if you don't treat my baits with respect. I said, this is a collection I've worked on since I've been a little kid. And, yeah, I got too much tackle admittedly so but you know what i don't drink i don't go to bars i don't drive fancy cars i don't drive fancy i don't buy fancy suits i've saved my money and this is what i choose to spend it on so and i've told everybody a million times i probably spend it on tackle to fill the empty hole of my heart because i can't fish as much as i want because i work work a ton on the businesses that i've run my entire life since i've been a paper boy so Anyway, man, it's my passion. I'm out of control. It's clear. So you can poke you, fun. It's I would all say that good. you, I think you're, you're at least right. Like <clears throat> probably <laughs> coming into COVID when you first started hopping on streams, the, the, the tackle was probably still going like this at that time. Mm, right? Not really. Maybe, not really. The, the, the JDM know, right? stuff. No, the but JDM I feel like you stuff, now are no. starting to slowly decline at least. Maybe you I'm were trying. plateaued then or I don't yeah. know, right? Like. Yeah. Well, no. So like for me, like if I saw like if I'd walk into a store Mm -hmm. and I was at a Smith Mountain tackle store, they were going out of business and they had Senko's for two dollars a pack, like green pumpkin and green, you know, black and blue. I'm like seven dollars a bag. And I had the cash and I'm like, I was just raking them off. And so I haven't bought a bag of Senko's in. I don't know. I mean, you know, was it a smart buy? I don't know. I was a volume guy if I saw something I liked. Like yeah. if I saw a bait that I loved and I found a stash, I'd buy a lot of them. You know, I'd buy a lot of them like that. Yeah, I would buy a lot of them. I'm a sucker for so a like, bait. I admit it. When Gander Mountain went out of business and they had all their truth, their tungsten marked. Oh, my 70% God. Off, you would grab all the tungsten. You would do stuff like that. Oh, for sure. Oh, Just like, I mean, raping. who would do that? What kind of maniac I, would do I, crazy right. things like that? Dude, I was at Walmart and they had the clearance rack and all the tungsten was super cheap. Dude, I was just going, mm, mm, like, it's whole, like a precious whole, metal. You're just investing whole, in futures. It's no different than pegs. burying gold bars in your backyard. You're buying tungsten. What's the difference? But, but here's the thing. I mean, people think I fish a lot. Last year, Scooter and I probably practiced for maybe two tournaments. So, it was the tournament days that I fished with Scooter. Most of the time, I'm driving down on a Friday afternoon, doing work in my car, mm-hmm. getting to his house, catching up on emails, rigging up that night before, and literally going in cold Saturday or Saturday and Sunday, and then driving home. And during the week, I wouldn't fish at all. It was I was a weekend guy. That's it. I don't live on a lake. I wish I did. That's what I need. Because I probably wouldn't buy as much shit if I was fishing. So, anyway. No, the aim is to not leave uh, the family with some crazy amount of insane tackle that they have to, like, sort through and go, what is all this stuff? Right. So, yeah. I mean, I think it would be really, really fun to do a show. Maybe it's a Patreon. I don't know. But um, just stream. You got to pay to watch. And then put stuff up for sale. Put it in lots and charge what it's worth. And thin the herd. Because... Yeah, so that's probably I a better. Term, I, right? I honestly don't think get rid I got, of it all versus like thin it down. No, to no, I'm not going to sell yeah. it all, man. But you know, manageable. I, no, I mean, I know where it all is. I mean, I can turn here and just find just about anything I want. And uh, people always kind of like, or well, how do you do that? Because I spent a lot of time down here. But uh, no, I did a lot of organizing the last couple of years, so it's time. And I'd like to give some stuff away to. So if you know any high school fishing teams that could use stuff, Ella, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to send it to him. I got a couple of boxes that I'm putting together for people that have reached out recently. So I sent one up to Connecticut, do one for a kid. I think he's uh God damn it. I forgot because Brian the Carpenter burnt me out last weekend. I got like six hours of sleep and I'm still on a hangover from it. Anyway. Yeah. There you go, man. 
Yeah. Tackle swaps, yeah. Chris Flay, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen one. They have flea markets, but I let I'm not letting them pass the crepe they go for a buck. Those people are looking for like bottom of the barrel. You know, I mean, like Zoom trick worms. What's a bag of Zoom trick worms now in like a good color? Well, they got to be what four ninety nine by now at least. Probably. Yeah, yeah. I'll sell mine for three. You know, buy five packs, save you know some some money. I don't I don't need all that I have. So anyway, that's the concept. I think what I've seen is like back like in three four years ago, you were still actively like you weren't pursuing bulk, but you were like mm-hmm. grabbing pogo shads and like you were still like outwardly getting some of those like you were still collecting and bulking up on some of the rare stuff and i don't know how much you probably don't do as much of that as you used to no no because because and hunting down on ebay you're not doing yeah yeah no i used to do it before you know when i started streaming like you know i could get double stamp minus ones for pretty cheap but as i started talking about it the prices went like that so no i don't need any more and so no that's done i'm done with that you know what i mean Yep. I fished so many different baits. And and the other part was for me, you know, I am completely the opposite of TK. I'm completely the opposite of Scooter. But, you know, when Scooter turns around, I'm throwing something crazy and it puts a seven mm-hmm. in the boat, you know, mm-hmm. with 30 minutes left or, you know, it picks up two call fish that we need critical in the tournament because we got two fish that are not going to make it for $32,000. And he goes, it'd be a great time to see that little finesse swim bait of yours. And I catch them. That's when I know him. That's what gives me gratification. He would Absolutely. never, ever throw it in a tournament. I've never seen him throw a spin around in a tournament except for once when he should have been throwing a jig. <laughs> <laughs> but I was catching him like fire and he had to get on the action. Sure. Anyway, you get the concept, right? I mean, I, I, what drives me and what drives me as a fisherman, I try to explain this to Travis. I get off. If I'm in a tournament in the back of a boat, I'm not telling the guy where to go, but he's fishing the same bank I would have picked pre-spring, and it's a giant group of tournament boats in the same area because that's where the fish are. We're not running 50 miles to go to the next river. You're there because weather, wind, or whatever, and I'm throwing a balsa flat-sided crankbait. I talked to Craig Powers about it, and I Craig didn't say, hey, throw some lead strips on my flat side. You, my CP3, you'll do really well in my spring crawl color. I've thrown some Sally Hansen nail polish on it to pump up the volume of the color. I throat weighted it and I painted it and I catch my 6 8. It's the big fish of the tournament and puts us in second place. I love it. After five boats have been down that bank. I also love when I got into JDM, I'm going, God damn, look at those micro jigs with good hooks. Before anybody had a micro jig on the market, before anybody here in America, thought about throwing a micro jig that I read about or could consume on my own, just research and tackle and being with my buddy, Mike Draper tournament situation in our bass club. And this one set of docks just got that. There's always boats on it, but there's always right. fish there and throwing that micro jig in with a micro trailer, not a bitsy bug micro. I'm talking way smaller JDM jig catching a three and a half in front of two other boats and another three down the line and cash on a good check. Mm -hmm. That's what drives me to find crazy shit, to buy a bunch of dumb shit, but I love to test new shit. And then Mm -hmm. I love to hack old shit. And I love to search for the really good vintage stuff. Vintage stuff that I think is different because of the plastic, the paint, the whatever, the action. And it's something that somebody doesn't have. That's the thing that drives me. Not to say that if I kept it simple and kept it standard with five rods on the deck, I couldn't do just as well. But remember, I'm fishing behind you. I'm fishing behind TK. I'm fishing behind Scooter Lilly and Billy Kramer. What am I going to do? Try to be the power guy behind him? Look, when the power bite's on, hell yeah, I'm going to match that power because that's what they want. If they want a giant bait and they're eating giant bait, let's both throw it. But when it gets tough, I like to have a trick up my sleeve. That's what drives me hella. There you go. (laughs) And everybody listening. But there's still 150 people listening. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for letting me. Uh, I don't even know why I had to say all that. Therapeutic I therapy. I, th- I think it was. I've said this before, though, yeah. many times. People are probably tired of hearing it that watch. You have to be but part of the replay ha- squad, Bass Assassin. But, but it helped me. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. 
become one of us. That's uh, right. One more. What, uh, what, what do you, met, what do you recommend with a, uh, eighth ounce jig with a good hook right now? That's like easily to get like a, like a jig head, like a shaky jig head. I think he's talking more bitsy bug, small flipping finesse jig. Damn. I mean, I mean the bitsy flip, uh, I wish they had a better hook. Um, I mean the Ike's mini flip. Pretty good, pretty good jig. Uh, there's one more. Oh shit, what's it called? My favorite ball head. Oh, here you go, Hella. And I was the jewel? just does the oh, jewel have a I I threw the jewel a lot back in the day, but this has become my favorite. And you'll know why because you'll see the hook. So this is the Deeks jig. It's crazy color. I bought the pink just to try it for smallmouth up north. I've never seen a pink jig. I don't know about anybody else. Um, so that's that. That's a sea wash pen, and it is yep. a very heavy gauge. Uh, I think it's a Gamakatsu BS um, B10S. That's the stinger, right? Um, I don't know what gap, and it might have a – I think it's custom made, by the way, for them. Um, I like that it's a ball head. I can skip this jig like crazy. I use that new um, Ike's. So what's the Ike's uh, little jig trailer? Hella, help me. Is it Berkeley? No, Berkeley. it's it's um, it's John Cruz. It's the Missile Bates trailer, jig trailer. Oh, the mini D chunk or the mini mini? It's the D chunk. It's the D chunk. It's the mini D yeah. chunk. So I match that up. It's got a double keeper there, kind of like the um, you know Outcast tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, but and it's compact. I mean, it's compact. It gets and it's tied super sparse. Like I don't even know how many strands is on there. It ain't a lot. What was the name of that jig again? This is Deeks. D E E K S. Deeks. But it's ball head, so it's not a grass jig, but it's a rock jig. Mm -hmm. Rock dock, not grass, because you know, try getting a ball head. You know, flat eye through a grass, and I no no bueno. Anyway, that I love this jig. That's my favorite. I would call it a mini jig, not a micro jig, mini jig. And for micro jigs, you know, there's a bunch of my life. I like the um, I like the Kai Tech model, whatever it's called, model one. That's probably a favorite of mine for grass. Um, it's tungsten. I love it. it's a fine cut silicone skirt. Um, I like how that hook tips up. I wish it was a little stronger. Um, but I'll I'll take it out of the package for. I mean, you know this jig, right? I'm sure. I'm aware yeah. of it. I don't yeah. Know it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not cheap, but anyway. Um, well, all I throw is tungsten jigs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this thing, this thing gets bit. So um, here's why I like this jig. See the hook point tips up mm -hmm. just like that frog. Yep. So it's a custom hook made for this jig. Model one comes through grass. Nice. It's super fine cut silicone. I like their colors. This has been in the package a long time, but I've caught a ton of fish on that jig. That would be my pointy head swim, you know, jiggity, if you will. My favorite. Those two. Ball head and then swim head. Mini size. And micro, it's some other JDM shit in there. There you go. Matthew wants to know, have you ever tried the Raid Igu type cover finesse jig or the Imakatsu Eber rubber finesse jig? Um, yeah, I don't know that I got them in here, but um, they're some of the ones that I bought. Like, um, this is one that I had pretty good success. This is what I threw the story that I was just telling you. That's a MC jig by um, it's an it's I believe it's Nori's, hmm. um, and it is a ball head, and I believe these skirts were rubber. So I, I was a fan, you know, round mm -hmm. rubber. I'd trim the skirt a lot. And then I would use like a conquistador tackle, just a mini chunk. I mean, you could use the zoom mini chunk, the little really, really tiny one. Love it in the spring, bed fishing. And it's got a hook that'll stand up. You know, don't throw it down to Texas, but it's a bad little dude, man. I had my way with yeah. that jig for a long time. So before, you know, the mini jig started coming out. The Zappa was pretty good too. Um I, I looked at the, like, I don't know, other ones. I bought some ones that had just, the hooks were just too small to waste the money. But, so, yeah, I plumbed the depths of it, man. 
when I was hunting for a micro jig because I had success trying to find the ultimate one. Awesome. Well, I feel like we're in yeah. a good spot. I think we're caught yeah, up man. on questions. Three hours. It's midnight in Epic Eric land. <laughs> he's not going to sleep that's, anyways. He's, that's great. I get too riled up, man. I walk right upstairs, sit in the chair, watch a movie, fall asleep, have dreams because there's a lot of blue light. Wake up, have some coffee, work my ass off, poke around some tackle during the day, maybe check my IG and do it all over again. And then just four or five short weeks, he'll be busting bass on Kerr with Captain Scooter Lily. No, I'm going to Florida with my oh, buddy. You got, Billy. A, you got a Florida trip before that. I got I got a Florida trip with Billy Kramer and Kevin Zott, two river rats. Mm. Billy's the OG river rat in my mind, one of them on the Potomac. And um, yeah, man, they invited me along. So it's going to be great, man. Looking forward to it. Fishing the Harris Chain of Lakes. And uh, hopefully I'm going to hook up with uh, Eric, the intern, Eric Guarino from Uncle Larry Outdoors. Mm -hmm. And maybe connect with Bud Cipolletti and Garrett. What's his name? He's a guide on the Kissimmee chain because I've never been there. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe Keith Wilson, who's the big bait guy that I hooked up with last time I was at the headwater. So nice. I'll be throwing all sorts of stuff, man. Regular fishing, big bait fishing, pond hopping, mm -hmm. and who knows what else. And hopefully Brian the Carpenter can join me at some leg of the trip. I'm nice. looking forward to it, man. Hopefully work doesn't pound me while I'm out. I'm there. Because, you know, son, you just can't put it down, man. This was awesome. Thank you. This yeah, is no, this was. You really really fun it was really 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 fun thank you this is my jam man i love talking tackle the tackle craft didn't have to watch kardashians tonight because we didn't cut the stream short so <laughs> everybody's a winner tonight that's right lots that's of positive right. comments everybody uh, thank you that was here was chiming in so everybody appreciate it um you came in late definitely that, I know I say this a lot, but tonight was definitely, definitely, definitely worth going back and watching the replay on YouTube or Facebook. Or I think this one's definitely video replay. You can listen to it, yeah. Via MP3 searching Halabas in your favorite podcast. Yeah. But I think the visuals in this one are worth watching on the video version. So cool, man. Um, cool, man. Oh, Thanks, yeah. everybody. Important. Uh, if we beat Halabas Fantasy Fishing Group, I don't think Eric has time for fantasy fishing, but. Password oh. advisor, join it up. We fell behind Ronnie Moore a little bit. We need to catch him. This public group. So uh, if you play fantasy fishing, join up. Forgot to mention that. Probably should have mentioned that when there was 200 people watching instead of just 100. <laughs> um, no, but, man. Yeah, I've always there. thought about it, but I've never done it. I don't know that I'd be uh, any good at it. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't watch a lot of it. Uh, I try to follow it because it's the thing that I love. Certainly don't spend any time yeah. on fantasy football or anything like that. But um, man, that that you're in, you got a group like you yeah. competing, like you pick your own team, like fantasy football. Is uh, you have a no, draft and all play that? In the public game, but we have a private group, and I do prizes for just the people that are private. So basically, I only give away the password here on the channel, so everybody is in wow. the group or people that are part of the community. So, um, so there's a couple hundred people in there. We're the biggest private group. And fantasy fishing so that's crazy man you got it going on hella you've grown quite a bit man you had a, you had a big group I, I i don't know how many people we had watching last time but it was a lot tonight yeah it was over that's 200 a, for a while so that, that's a that's a that's a big stream man in the fishing world i feel like the streams are gaining steam you know which is cool yeah this is a good time of year right like you said yeah, winter winter uh, right we're, on we're cooped up you yeah. get to be, you know, when it's light out till nine, ten o'clock at night, and people are out <laughs> watching ball games. And there's a lot, there's less people. Mm -hmm. Very uh, true. So Very password true. advisor, Warren County. But yeah, no, it's good. It's, uh, you know, you talked about it. It's therapeutic for me as well. Like this gets me yeah. through the winter. It gets me through yeah. the weeks that I don't go fishing as much as I want to. Um, yeah, I do this for the community and the people. And I know you see some of the new faces oh, yeah. and some of the familiar faces that are on right. the stream. So, yeah, sure, um, sure, sure. No, there's a there's a core group of guys that are on a lot of streams. And gals. So, you know, I mean, and gals too. Yeah, hello. Shout out to the gals, the bass and gals. Um, no, nah, man, but it's awesome, man. No, that's what keeps me going, man. means a lot to have the So no stream questions. next week, though, because work day job, I have to. I actually won't be too far from you. I got to go to Pennsylvania and New Jersey for work. Whoa. Week. Wow. You're real close. Yeah, but I'll be busy. Won't actually. No, I'm flying into BWI and then driving up to flying into Baltimore and then driving. That's, so. that's like 20 miles from my house, bro. Yeah, 
I wasn't on sure. the list of people that got to walk in the bait room, so I'm not stopping by. So <laughs> I, I, I was listening. I didn't hear. So I don't, I don't know you well enough, man. I streamed with you twice, man. <laughs> That's a very short list, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm list. less shifty than Travis. Don't worry. <laughs> he got his one bite of the apple and that's it that's it man that's it i almost kicked his ass out too and i'd do it again uh no i, I gotta go near harrisburg carlisle oh yeah Virginia, and then heading over to like crandon new jersey or something like that it's not far camden? from new york okay man good Glamour small stuff. fishing good good smallmouth fishing up there in uh harrisburg Above Dun Cannon. I've actually opinion. been to York a ton of times. Never took the time to go fishing up there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you ought to try but. one time, man. Well, good stuff, man. Well, thank you for having me on again. Absolutely. I really, really enjoyed it, man. You got a great crowd here for sure, man. Great questions, great comments. A lot of fun. Kept it positive, man. I like the vibe. It was awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah. And as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass, suck less. <laughs> That's good. I like that. 